Welcome to What the Theory with Joel. This is Joel. Joel. Excuse me. We agreed on this. You will introduce me, introduce yourself. Oh. And then, yeah, you're taking over the, the show. I was like, uh huh. Uh -huh. Who's next? You're waiting for Joel. Okay. Welcome to What the Theory um, with Joel and Belinda and Jill. From Can We Talk? Woo. Welcome, ladies. Um, Thank you. There's a guy off screen called Alan. Uh, if you hear a sound of uh, dripping water, that's him. He has an issue. He has an illness. Uh, say hi. Hi. Why? Why do you keep talking like that? How? You, you, oh, you, you catch me off guard. So yeah, like, okay, hey. sorry. I got you off guard. <clears throat> anyway, uh, ladies, thank you for coming. Thank you for, thank having, you for us. having us. How are you? We're fine. We're good. excited. Nervous. Yeah, yeah. We're happy to be here. Would you like to see my package? <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> How long did you do you have that one? <laughs> <laughs> my package. It was ready. It was right here. Mm. Anyway, um, so we're here to talk. Firstly, to you, understand what uh, the work that you guys have been doing for a while. Uh, I think you started before us. How long have you been doing Can We Talk? Um, can We Talk has like two starts, eh? There's 2019. The original. There was the original. 2019. Yeah. yeah that's mm -hmm. our original, original 2019, when it was still just like a podcast. And then it became a business three years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It became a business. So you registered? Yeah, yeah. Let's not say this. Kind of. Anyway, it's Don't worry. It's entertainment. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's a hobby. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's, it's, like, it's now a business. Yeah. It's registered, though. Fully mm. registered. Um, fully operating as a business. So, yeah, now it's a full business. So, you guys are business partners, not just friends. Mm. Uh, yeah, we actually started as people work together and, and then, then became, became friends. friends. You? First, explain. I was looking for the first time I was hiring. I interviewed her. Okay. Yeah. Clicked things in the cosmos worked what, and now we are here. We've been so we started off as fully workmates, workmates and then yeah. we started oh. going to friendship. Oh, like me and Alan. Yeah. Look at Alan smiling. <laughs> I, I always thought we were friends. Then, as we made it, we just worked together. <laughs> Now you found out. Eh? <laughs> you guys want to I have work. to establish dominance, otherwise the guy will take over. <laughs> He's such a crazy person. <laughs> we don't say that on this show. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm excited about today. I think um, I had thought of doing something with you guys ever since I got the cards. I got two decks. One is the one for, I think, home edition. Mm -hmm. That's the one that's the most popular in the, in the house. Even my old man who you met was using it the other day to answer some, yeah, some yeah. questions. That's yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. Um, I think he's getting emotional in his old age. Who knows? <laughs> um, and then the other one was the dating edition. Oh, so yeah. I was, yeah. How did that go? That one. Mm. Uh, mm. Mm. <laughs> no, we started with the cards and then we ended up in other conversations. Mm. Yeah, so it was a good jumping off point. I've okay. yet to finish an entire deck, but it's because I over up. I think yeah. I jump from one thing to another. But that's a good thing. I think the whole point of the cards is for you to start a conversation, not to finish the, the deck. deck. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Have Have you got any testimonials of people <laughs> becoming uh, better lovers, better friends, uh, better have, family? We have. We oh, have, you have. have yeah. Mm. Um, people actually take them for like their first dates, so it's always a good starting point. Yeah, and also the married people mm. really like the relationship one. Like yeah. you hear a lot of, I thought I've, like we've been married for so long. I think the last person was like has been married for eleven years. Yeah, and they thought they knew their person, yeah. but it was a new. It's a whole new light with, with which you see your person. Mm. Yeah. It's like, yeah. And also, we've had the bad ones. I've had someone who <laughs> they divorced after, after the like, relationship I really edition, don't know this person. which is also a good ending because now you know you're not meant to be together. Yeah, so, <laughs> either way, you are winning. <laughs> that was the most shocking review. As I said. Yeah, but the okay. person was actually. Wait, it's happy. a written review. No, like no. Oh, they, okay. it was at an event when they walked up to us and said, um, "I played this game and realized this wasn't the person for me." Yeah. 
Uh, so buy the cards uh, <laughs> for you to know if you're really where you're supposed to be. Better late than never. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was about to make the joke that all your other cards seem to be very nice. Mm. Um, the the feeling I get is warmth. So yeah. we're, when we're walking, yeah, when we're walking on this one, <laughs> yeah, it's a little controversial, I think. Um, so I don't know if you can get it. Uh, it's the can we talk conversations worth having? <clears throat> what the theory edition? <laughs> yours, yours truly uh, put them together. Um, yeah, it's only because I, I ask some questions in conversation with my friends and sometimes they'll tell me things like, what's going on in your head? Mm. So now they can know what's going on in my head. And for me, the goal was, uh, well, like you said, to, the good side, hey, this is what this person is really into. Oh, this is what they think about this is their life philosophy. Then the other would be to find the reprobates among you. Yeah. <laughs> the people who think all kinds of wacky things. So and at I some point later, alone. yeah, like at some point later when we play, I'm going to find out if, <laughs> if this is a sound business relationship for us to have. Yeah. But before that, uh, I wanted to know about these, um, what do you call them? The connect of the events? Um, there's Chill and Connect. We have different spaces. Uh -huh. So there's Chill and Connect, which we get together and play the cards with everyone. So it's an interesting way to hear what people think. I think for me, I always find it interesting mm. how, like, women are always this side, men are always thinking something different. Like, yeah. it's like, oh, that's how people think. Yeah, and it's always, I, I really enjoy um, the conversations that, like, between the men and the women, it's just like, yeah, you guys are totally on the opposite sides, but it seems to be um, every single time you leave, guys are like, eh, kumbe you chicks, that's how you think. That's how you think, but that, also people this, are always yeah. like, people, everyone comes in quiet eh, mm. and shy, no one wants to say anything. Suddenly, mm. by the end, it's like, everyone no, like, not stop want this, the microphone, please, pass the microphone, <laughs> yeah. let me put the back. So. so, chill and connect happens every last Thursday. Um, and it's a good way for you to also meet new people because we found that it also helps people to make friends. Yeah. Mm. A lot of older people are actually lonely. And it's like, where do I meet people? <laughs> where do I actually meet people within Kampala, right? Mm. So because it's sort of like a chill space, like it's not too serious, but then also you're getting, usually people come and sit next to someone they don't know. And by the time mm. you're leaving, it's like, oh, you've made a new friend. Oh, you've mm. heard how people, different people talk and think. So you start gravitating towards, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So people have made a lot of friends there as well. We've actually had also a couple of people reach out and say, I found, um, like, I was looking for a job and someone from the community was able to do this or I was looking for, maybe, a, remember the last one said I was looking for a model for, so yeah. I had a fashion line and they're like, mm. I was looking. So it's like networking without the pressure yeah. of networking yeah. event. Without the, where is you the know, CV? I really... <laughs> Okay, let's talk about this for a second. Every networking event I've ever gone to, I would rather be, I'd rather someone pull out my fingernail. Me too. I hate networking events. <laughs> it's it's so like quiet. we're just, I want, uh, let's put our business cards on the yeah. table and yeah. we'll look at them. And then yeah. you can see. That's, that's Alan's, <laughs> that's Alan's form, not you mine. Sure everyone you had, else's the form. sound guy, it had to be his. <laughs> I don't know if you can see his reflection there. But it's, it's the camera. It's embarrassed. Always. Camera is warning me about something. The camera? Yeah. Really? <laughs> that I'm lying. <laughs> Every time I lie. <laughs> anyway, um, the last time I was at a networking event, I met someone and they were telling me things about their business. Mm. Then eventually, they said, oh, you look familiar. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, you, you run that podcast which talks about dark things. I said, oh. <laughs> Dark things. No, it turned out they had been watching the one that I did on uh, on uh, death. I was talking about why I have the skull on my table yeah. and all of that. And then uh, the people around the table were just like, what? You talk about death? <laughs> and at the end of the evening, I think I had the most pleasant experience I've had at a business event because mm. we weren't just avatar. You know, like LinkedIn. Oh my, and oh that's my how networking God. events feel. Exactly. It's like, hi, I do mm. this, please, we can call it, and it's like... It's the physical mm. representation of what we're <laughs> doing. It's like, it's like why am I here? LinkedIn here? Yet, I feel like networking happens when you're not networking. Like, yeah. Yeah. if I know something about you that's not about your business, by the way, 
that's the thing. I that's, really that's, hate that's, networking events because yeah. of that. It's like LinkedIn for real. Please see me. I am so good. I do this. These are <laughs> like, my oh achievements God. for the month. Yeah. The announcement itself. Now it's time to network. To network. <laughs> and then like a pressure, you know, like an awkward first pressure of, okay, um, now are you supposed to walk up to someone you don't know? You're like, your man. Features, and meanwhile, the thing is, with can we talk people be like, so, you're like, oh, we work with can we talk? They're like, yeah, we can talk. I'm like, yeah, no, the business is can we talk? <laughs> So you have to start explaining yeah, oh what God. you guys do, networking why events no. So chill and connect is a mm. much better alternative. Yeah. 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 Okay. And then how do you get the people who are coming? Just like put out uh, calls that hey, this mm. is happening, and then people invite friends or. Yeah. yeah. Essentially, so, that's essentially, that's essentially yeah. we've built a very good community, I would say. Mm. Like eh, our can we talk people write for us? Sometimes yeah. I feel like they write for the brand. Well, I won't say it, but they write for yeah. it too. way no, harder. Yeah, it's good. It's good. So it's like we put it out also because currently it's been a free space. Yeah. Um, people come. I mean, it's after work. It's then Bandali. People enjoy it. It's they like, already have plans to cross over after. So yeah. I'm just after chill and connect. Ah, so. you're the yeah. Bandali. People. And also there are enough people I think who have come repeatedly. Like mm. there are people who have been there. I think since yeah. we started last year. Okay. So. Is there anything that's surprised you, like from when you thought about it and now, like where it's gone? Because I saw mm. uh, we did we did that UNCDF event. Mm. I remember they were telling me, oh, can we talk cards are going to be there? And I yeah. said, for Fireside, <laughs> I was pleasantly surprised. So, yeah. I mean, now you're in corporate spaces as well. Yeah, we do. Um, sorry, just to go back to what is so surprising about Chill and Connect is the, th- the hundreds of people who reach out and be like, I really needed that space. Mm. So when we started, we thought, maybe, it's okay, not that deep. 25, 30 people, that's it. And then you get there and there's no sitting space. Mm. Yeah, so I think for me, that's so surprising. But also the, how people are engaged throughout the conversations, like from the start to the end. When you finish, people are like, we are done. Yeah. One more hour, we're just like, nah, we're done. So for me, that mm. that, that has been the most, beautiful thing about the space yeah. for me yeah. Yeah. watching for me, the young people I talk about because. their things and yeah for me what has surprised me with can we talk as a whole eh, is how much people have gravitated to it like mm. i didn't when you talk of us being in corporate spaces yeah. in the beginning i it's same i never thought we'd do a can we talk deck for a company like it was such a a thing of yeah friends maybe relationships but then realizing that connection is everywhere mm. like if i'm working with you it's it's better if we have uh we don't have yeah. to be friends but it's like and it's like oh this actually applies to everything it's not just one thing and the other thing that has surprised me as well is i will keep saying it is how much men are also involved in the space yeah. i think most spaces i've been to where it's like we are talking this of course apart from Joel here creating an amazing space. Um, it's always like ah, that's a woman thing. What a bad for <laughs> <laughs> It's like that's a woman's thing yeah. and this and this. But whether we're having a mental health space yeah. or we're talking about, there's still enough men, men involved in the conversation through, yeah. as well. So mm. for me, that has surprised me. Um, and Some also Ugandans. When we started, a <laughs> lot of people were like, I remember when I did the first deck, someone told me, no one is going to buy those cards it's because Ugandans. Game. Only uh, one drinking games. No, you guys don't want to talk, and also finding home was mm. very deep. So people are like, no, you guys are not gonna buy that mm. thing. So when I put out the order for the pre-orders, I was shocked that people are actually like, mm. yeah, yeah, we actually want more. Where can I get another one of this? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, uh, the thing you're saying about men, uh, <laughs> you know how you said they won't buy people. I think won't buy cards unless it's a drinking game. Mm-hmm. It's like the thing they say about golf. That all the clubs and all of that stuff, it's an excuse for men to go on a walk. Mm-hmm. And but talk. you need some excuse. <laughs> that, oh, we're going to, you know, put these balls into those holes. Yeah. And they spend the whole afternoon together. I feel like booze, there's some, it's, it makes more sense for me to be like, I'm drinking with my buddies, mm-hmm. but I want to hang out with them. But I can't, it's like, we can't hug each other there. <laughs> I've said hugging my, my male friends like this. Like as real, opposed to... Areola, as opposed areola, to... Areola to Areola. Yeah. Mm. Like this. Real... And I hold them. You know, like, 
Yeah, there has to yeah, be that. Yeah, it has to be that. And then they hit why each other so hard. so hard. Like, why are you doing you that? You had a Mercedes Bro Diddy. Like, you have to. <laughs> there's some some big other that you have to yeah. say. I, I, I'm not, I'm not no, doing, no, that. I'm doing that. Which is weird. Yeah. How does it feel now to do that? Aerial the, to aerial. No, it's quite nice. The, the beginning is... <laughs> like, it's, 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 it's... Okay. I was going to give an example. Then I realized my dad might watch this. It's like... Um, if someone walked in on me naked... Mm-hmm. Trust me, this is going to be <laughs> doing something. If they walked in on me naked, right? I think they are more embarrassed than I am. Mm. At least for me. At least at some point, I'm like, um, now you've seen. Mm. Mm. <laughs> but for them, <laughs> they have to do something with the information. Yeah, yeah. So, like, when. They can't see what they've seen. At first, people are like, why is that guy hugging me? But then they start getting uncomfortable. Mm. And I'm like, bro, why are you uncomfortable? And then after a while, they now will give me the full embrace. Yeah. So I feel like men. And this is Mike's. Maybe Alan will tell me. Mm-hmm. I think is guys, there a Didi or some Didi? <laughs> a little Didi. A little Didi. Oh, no, I'm. <laughs> uh, uh, is my assessment of men wrong? I feel like men are, are more lonely than than women. Yeah, th- that's true. They are. When and we wear uh, it like pride, we're like mm-hmm. yeah, wear it like pride. It's like like we don't go to war anymore. So now, mm. like, if we're looking for a battle to fight, it's like my emotions and like what I'm going through. <laughs> and I'm like, like we're at the table, like I walked here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like you wear that as like, is this your, your, your fighting? And this is the a man who you see to, not yeah? in the struggle, you'll be like, this guy doesn't get me. This guy mm. won't. Yeah. Yeah, like so I think with that's my male why friends, we don't. I, very few of them do I know when they're going through like difficult things. I'll know after. So or you'll talk about need... it after or you, you like, will you bring it up or you just notice and then it's like, hey, how are you? Man, oh, I was suffering. Yeah. Then you move on. No, it's, so I, I didn't have friends who were girls until like S4, like proper friends. Before it would be like, man, that chick is cute. Let me just talk to her and see what happens. Mm. Then after a while, you realize, eh, I have no reason. Things are <laughs> right now I'm trapped in this thing. Not no <laughs> but, you know, No reason. But... <laughs> At a certain point when, you know, you, you generally become friends, mm. I started noticing, like, oh, what are you doing for your birthday? Mm. I'm like, what? What are the plans for this? Oh, I remember last time you told me this, or they'll buy me gifts on things I've been speaking about. Yeah. And then I think, oh, I have to actually be... You're like, this is nice. Consider it. Like, for, <laughs> for guys, we have two modes. It's like, hey, we're fooling around, mm-hmm. and that's how we get to know each other. But if you're telling me a problem, it means you probably think I can help you with it. But for you to tell me, and I just listen, and then I go, "Mm, sorry, like, actually, guys have that thing, and it's annoying. When you're dating a guy, you're telling him, I'm hungry. I'm not not asking you to find a solution there and then. Immediately. You should order this. Maybe you should. It's like, no. Why did you not eat? I'm ranting. (laughs) Why did you not eat? Why did you not eat? Look, I was just telling you my day. um, Like she said, when you're dating or with your female friends, mm. do you rant or to them? Yeah, compared to your female, no. to your male. Generally, don't rant about things. No, I I feel weird ranting. Mm. Like uh, <clears throat> at a certain point, as I'm speaking about it, I feel like why, like why are you telling them all this? I feel like I'm getting lighter and the person's getting heavier, mm. which I have learned over time that that's the point. Like a problem shared is probably halved. Mm-hmm. And you feel like you have someone who can hear you. And I think I was too distracted about what I was saying before. Whereas now I'm more inclined to talk about certain things because mm. I know what listening feels like on the other end. Mm. Uh, before, if you knew, all oh, these people are going to solve the problem. So I have to come when I'm ready to ask and say, can you help me with this? Mm-hmm. Or I'm ready to listen to them. Mm-hmm. So without that, mm-hmm. like Alan, I don't know his problems. He tells me after. <laughs> But when he tells you, do you like, is it? But is, to, to be fair, most I of my problems oh. shock him. Mm. He, he always goes silent for like, what's, what's happening? So when you tell him a problem, <laughs> it's just like, at that wow. point, it's just to share. You don't need, do you need, do you find that you look for a reaction from him? Or it's mm. just to share? And, okay, and that's, that's the thing about me. Like when I tell you my problems, usually I'm not looking for a solution. Because I'm used to them happening because they keep happening. All the time, there's a okay, particular. Can be, okay, can be laughing. You can tell you, oh man, my leg is broken. <laughs> oh man, you know what? I just I was jumping off a board. Yeah, what was that? <laughs> so <laughs> just the mixed like, emotion with the information is yeah. like uh, I think, is it like two three weeks ago. Yeah. Like the episode we shot with with, with Tony, 
So the card got, like it died, it lost the footage. Mm. And then I dealt with that for two weeks without telling him because uh, while I was looking for a solution, mm. until I found it, <laughs> and after toiling <laughs> for two weeks, to, and I got in there, after I told him, oh yeah, by the way, this Mark. happened, this died. <laughs> But I got it, it's fine, it's like, ah, oh, okay. Cool. My interpretation was different. My interpretation is, I think he didn't want to disappoint me. Mm. He didn't want to see that thing of, what? That's my interpretation. Not, not, not just you, but like me see, disappointing people, people in general. Yeah. Yeah. It's not something I'm into, like, uh. everyone knows me for like competence and this, 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 like I get things done. Oh, so, wow. and as much as I know, people can be like, okay, it's fine, mm. we'll find a solution. I never want to put them in, in that situation, situation. Yeah, yeah. yeah so like if i feel they see the solution mm. i'll go until i fail then i'll be like okay yeah but, but in it's... terms of work i won't lie you i relate I, friend, you in I terms die. of work i relate because if there's a problem it's I'm like dying let needs. me try and get the solution so by the time i approach let's say even if you mm. didn't get the card mm. itself it's like by the time i approach the person mm. it, especially if it's a problem that has to do with them as well right mm. Because he has recorded, mm. he's expecting the episode. It's like, yeah, <laughs> let me come back and to you with a solution. With something, and, yeah. And, guys, and that's if if we're friends, it makes it worse. Because people think like if you work with your friend, like if you can make a mistake and tell them, oh man, this happened, and they would understand. Yeah. But like now, me, I take that the other way. Like I never it's want so to play. It's so much pressure because now there's friendship yeah. and the work. But, yeah. And I never want to play the friendship card. Be like, hey man, you know me, you understand this happened. That's and right. It, yeah. And Joel would, Joel would have actually been fine. I'd be like, oh yeah, it's okay. I can actually call the guy. We should. Like that's, there's a there's a place where that happens. Yeah. But I don't want to put him in a position whereby yeah. you think like Alan is your friends. This happened. Mm, yeah. That, yeah. So like that I go. Pressure that comes with working with your friend. It's like. I don't look like I'm failing on my part just because we are friends. Mm. So now I have to die on the thing yeah. until I fix it. I find she's like that and she overperforms then. <laughs> like, yeah. That's why that's why that's why you guys are working together. <laughs> and I'm like, yo, chill. Like and she's like I just like I can't this, play the friend this, card. This. Yeah. I guess. No. It's but it's good pressure though. It's good pressure. And, yeah. and what you were saying about sharing, like I have, let me say, had three friends, mm. like two ladies and a guy. Mm -hmm. And the guy never asked me personal things. Like it was always, <laughs> and then I would spend yeah, the most time him. with him. Yeah. Because we would like couple together, like then also like, in, the, in the evening. It was never personal. But the ladies were so into like, Alan, you look sad. What's going on? What's this, this? And I would always share with them. Mm. I reached the point where I was like, man, I, you're going through this. I didn't know. I found out from the ladies. I'm like, what's... <laughs> At what, at what point, from at that what point do I bring this up when Drake is playing in the car? <laughs> also, how do you bring that up? Like, right. um, but then, like after that, he took steps to always actually ask questions, like, yeah, mm. "How's everything? How's the family? How's this?" Mm. And then, like that bridge. And then now we are. So from, for men, it's always like from your angle as someone has experienced both um, sides of the coin. When you say, "How do you even start the conversation? How do the women start the conversation?" I feel like women just ask. So yeah, we, women ask because women are like yeah. uh, like cleaning a room. There's something wrong with this. Something wrong with this. Alan does not look nice. Yeah. Like what's what's going on? There with must you? be a problem. I don't like that face. That's mm. seen a different face. So what's what's happening? So they always read the room. And we're very guys, guys read yeah. and like, like someone will say yeah. fine in a, with a tone, and you're like, mm, are you sure you're fine? Like um, that's why I don't <laughs> talk. That's why I don't <laughs> talk with something. Like she's going no. to unleash yeah, something. Yeah, you know, that's a bit. With text, I can even read the text in your tone. Yeah. I'm like, it's, like, everything it's okay? fine, but you need to like, fine. Mm. Hold on. That thing about text. One, okay, you get, you, you, get, you use emojis when you're texting. I use yeah. a lot a of lot. emojis. Yeah, so I do. If you try and roll back now, because I'm trying to roll back, because at some point I look at my, I'm like, this is like a, <laughs> there was so much. <laughs> ah, I'm, like, is it I'm dying. Skulls. I was like, all right, let me try and, it looks like you you are so annoyed when you just go. Oh, that's very yeah. funny. Then I let it yeah, go. I know. So like, now, hi. when I was texting, I was like, "This guy is very yeah, hi hi." Mm. Full stop. Me, I'm like, "Hi, I, I, smiley, smiley. <laughs> smiley. <laughs> Good morning, you know smiley happy. face." Guys, when it's boys' <laughs> business, I'm I was like, "Yeah." Hey. Yeah, like men don't use emojis. Yeah. Like sometimes when a man send an emoji, emojis. no, we do apparently. <laughs> like we punch emojis <laughs> or. So, so, we are, we are, we are pushing <laughs> okay. Like sometimes when I'm going to send an emoji to someone, I'm like, let's go back. Have they ever sent one to me? <laughs> like, this is an emoji friendship one. Really? Oh, yet. you mean, but I wow. get what you mean, that some are not. Yeah, they're somewhere. You're you like, mean it's, but it's I use emojis everywhere. An emoji friendship. Like, like, even a smiley face. 
Yeah. May I use okay, it skulls are for like I'm dying. Dead. No, like yeah. for my people of like oh, it's okay. a deep Yeah. Yeah, but even now, uh like the youngest person I know is twenty five. And when she texts like it's everything. Mm-hmm. So I I, I, I I wrote lol and she was like, Are you annoyed with me? <laughs> 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 like lol is like a fake laugh. <laughs> yeah, actually, so, you put lol, sprinkle, sprinkle at the end. Yeah, I don't like it when you do this lol. <laughs> <laughs> Say it with your chest. Why? <laughs> <No. laughs> I the lol. Because hats are. So the hat is genuine, and then the. My God, I'm so old. May I sprinkle the lol there? I won't lie. You know something that makes me anxious about texting is sending someone a, a very long paragraph. Oh. Because me, my feelings get hurt if you've only responded to one part of the paragraph. Go mm. back and read and be like, so the first paragraph. <laughs> yeah, I even. Mean. What's the appropriate appro- So now I have to wheels? break it down. You have to respond to you. every part. No, of I, you hear me. But in real life, like when you're having a conversation, someone says a lot of stuff, then you go, all right, I've heard you. That's no, true. I, no. Actually, no. me, that's why I, I prefer, I don't text, like, let's talk. I don't like yeah. texting too much. There's because so much that is lost. First of all, I'll read your things in a different tone. You'll say, you made me angry and you you're just saying it like that and me i'm really like you made me very angry and i'm like <laughs> it's like that key and bill sketch <laughs> you're not coming yeah <laughs> oh man it's just like the attitude that you have yeah reads is, the yeah. thing that's coming through i don't like those long texts yeah. but yeah. even me i agree respond to everything because like, it's a text like a letter you remember yeah. you used to write letters in high you school respond to every single part yeah, of yeah, the letter <laughs> I was, I was focused. I was writing to the Lord. The was writing to the Lord. <laughs> you didn't put the decay word. Oh no, Spray of course I put. Spray with small, small perfume. We never ja rule comes on. That's me and you, mother. Um, sorry, my age. Your yeah, age is showing. I was going, no, I was going to ask you. He pulled out ja rule. I said, wow. <laughs> so I am a naturally introverted person, mm. I think because I like to have my own time and space. Like at the end of the day, I need to sort through my thoughts. But the pandemic and being in lockdown kind of tilted me the other way where I now became, I wouldn't say anxious, but whenever I would see like someone coming through and we have to have a talk, Mm. there was a part of me that was like, oh, here we go. Because the whole day I'd been in the house, I don't have to say anything to anyone. And I don't know how it is for you, but when someone asks me a question, in that moment, I have to start doing a check Mm. And usually after I've finished speaking, I don't find that what I've said captures what I'm feeling. It's like the minute I talk, now that's who I am. But mm. when I'm quiet, I, I don't have to explain anything to anyone. And then I started seeing that there's a lot of, I don't think it was because of a pandemic, but it became more, I think, acceptable. People talk about their social anxiety. Mm. Uh, this feeling of like, oh, I'm not sure what everyone is feeling. And I remember when we were talking about this, I had suggested at some point, oh, do you ever think about making electronic? Mm. And you said no. And why? Because it takes away from the in-person the physical. Mm, physical connection. I mean, when I'm next to you, I'm seeing your body language. I'm seeing little things. So you can feel the vibe even. can mm. feel the, yeah, the energy. The energy. If it's, mm. I'm still, that's something by the way, we're still back and forth with, like yeah. the app thing, because people are like, but sometimes I'll go on a trip and maybe I didn't carry the yeah. books, right? Yeah. Which makes sense. And then you can always be on the phone, but you'll be on your phone and you'll probably get a notification. Mm. Now that's imagine the problem, yeah. that day, that point the person has read a can we talk card that, how do you deal with your pain and shame? And Bambi, a person is giving you the like, paragraph. And then you're like, <laughs> and then can you imagine yeah. Jay-Z has been arrested? Like, it's like, Man, I where do we go from here? Yeah, all these. But if we're here, things, just the yeah. two of us. I have a card. You have a card. It's yeah. like, yeah, let's talk. Let's go through even the awkward silences. But because of the physical connection, it's like, mm. yeah. Did when you guys decided to do the podcast? Because it's uh, I see the visuals. How come you decided? Yeah, we're going to be on camera and people are going to see us. What made the? <laughs> hey, I may have landed on a thing. Uh-huh. One of us, you want to start? One of us, I'm not going to say who it was. was I not, think we know. <laughs> eh, me. By the way, Can You Talk like, started as oh a podcast. Eh? Yes. But it didn't have as much pressure. Like, I was there in my car room recording things on the own. But mm. now that it's a brand. Eh. But also, I was dealing with what he said. Like, after COVID, 
and that whole period, like I went through a whole life transformation yeah. in the last two years that it was very back and forth for me. Like, do I really mm. want to be perceived? Like for me, mm. it's one thing. Imagine being seen. Ugh. Yeah, like, do I really want to air out my thoughts? Is it yeah. like that? I so think for me, my biggest fear was, was, was like, Melinda, we are doing this. <laughs> for me, I was just like, because when we sit in the car, we can go for three hours. We've talked <laughs> non-stop. This is us from here to... Remember the yeah. time we went to... Was it Bujuko? Yeah. We, sp- <laughs> we sat in the car and talked until we got there. Yeah. So, like, we have really good conversations. Yeah. And... Maybe it could be a thing this way we have other people join us. But I think for me my biggest fear was now I'm walking on the street, everyone knows what I think about things. Yeah, then, I don't but, like it. I'm, I'm like, like, why? It's like you're sitting in my brain yeah. and opening pages and saying, Oh, this is what you think about this. Mm. Mm, I don't like it. Oh, yeah. Why would you think that? So I think for me that was my biggest fear, which was Actually, for me, yeah. the only reason I allowed is because I got. Oh, I used to have that fear in the beginning when I used to mm. do it alone. But I think with all the work I've done with myself, I've reached this point where I really don't care mm. what you think of what I think. Like there are people mm. in my life, of course, I care about their what they what they think. But because yeah. I'm so at home with where I am right now, and I'm past that fear, is the yeah. only reason I was like, I can stand on business of what I say. Mm. But also, I think, and I have my boundaries. If I don't yeah. want to share something, I'm not going to share it. Yeah. yeah. But also, I think doing it um, with someone eases the pressure. Yeah. Because it's not like you're the one they are looking at. Now yeah. it's like they're looking at me, kind of, and Belinda, kind of. Yeah. So it takes away the pressure, but also the working with the someone who you can express what your fears are and yeah. they can walk you through and you say, I'm worried about this episode. I might have said something and then mm. they will console you. Because when I was alone, I used to edit all those things out. Yeah. The things I don't like, I'll be like, okay, we're cutting from here, from here to here. But now, because yeah. Jill is there, it's like, yeah, you said what you said, mm. but I also like the different opinions. Mm. Like, it's like, a lot of people think we are very similar, yet but we really, have very different yeah. opinions mm. and thoughts on things and whatever. Yeah. So, I like what? <laughs> you go watch the podcast and huh? you see. I want to see this. <laughs> Yeah, but I, like, I think we're actually very different. But also, just generally, how we grow up, yeah, we, we grew like, up very, yeah. Different. very differently. So the so, way we see the yeah. world is so different. Very different. But I think the thing of why people think we are similar is when you spend time with someone, not but like you kind of. Mm. My brother said, to, "You all look together with that car girl." Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. So my mom was like, "Ah, oh, so when you're choosing the person, you're like, I'm looking for someone who kind of looks like me." <laughs> mm, that. That was your goal, but having someone who you talk to and they fully, they see you, your opinions are different, but they're just like, that's it okay. Is, yeah. mm. It is what it is. Okay. So. I, I, I'm, I'm still struggling with keeping this thing video. This guy knows. <laughs> Even you? He has found each other, but him has failed to find someone who is like him. That's <laughs> I, I found him, and I'm trying to bring him in front of the camera. In. So eventually, we're going to switch. I'll be that side. I and then he'll be like, that's to my plan. <laughs> But yeah. no, I feel like, uh, <clears throat> okay, uh, the other, when was it, January uh, of my birthday, so many people were liking, oh, it's your birthday. Mm-hmm. And I noticed that a bunch of the people who are in there are people who would usually call or reach out to me. But now, I think we have these vast networks, like I feel like there's a part of who I am that is on Twitter, mm-hmm. that is on Instagram. And I think it's silly. You know how people say, we just log off. And, but there are some connections that you've made there. If someone insults me there, it's not like I don't feel it. Yeah. But I also think it has spread me kind of thin. And mm. uh, I keep trying to water all these relationships. Mm. And yet I can't. Mm. So <clears throat> I found that I have to be quite particular in terms of who am I going to make time for? Mm. Who am I going to invest in? Because now it's a big deal for uh, there's a workmate of ours who just had a baby. <laughs> for liking the person like I've done my yeah. and not in a bad way but you kind of feel like yeah I'm being supportive this is what I can do mm. and I, everyone kind of feels like there's so much going on and they're so busy but for me a lot of it is because I've stretched a part of myself online and I'm trying to minimalize that I'm trying to speak to people like it's now commonplace. I don't think it's as rude when people are on their phone when you're talking to them. But mm-hmm. I still find it really 
Not that I mind, rude. but I find it terrible if I'm speaking. And then um, I find it rude. I'm like, like there's a person here. Yeah. Yeah. But, rude. But, but it's now becoming more of the norm because I was like, hey guys, let's put our phones down. Like, oh, this man is old really. guy. <laughs> Thank God I'm not around those people yeah, where that's it's, the norm. I rarely talk to someone who's yeah. tough. <laughs> yeah, we are here. We are tough. <laughs> no, w- w- one of my closest friends like, does that's that. Interesting. But like, it's 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 because I know it's not. She's not being social. It's for work. Mm. And I know she can't multitask. The people who like I can text and talk and wave. I can and, tell and, and when and you're talking and texting. Yeah, you can <laughs> no, always. Tell yeah, her. but for her it's like always for work. And then like she, you give her like a good two minutes to finish that, and she will come back. Huh? Where were we? What were we talking mm. about? But then when it's out of work and it's like after work hours, the phone is always mm. away. Mm. Yeah. Because yeah, for me, I, I work on social media apart from these other things. Like, and I find myself on phone all the time. But once I'm with someone, like. Yeah. Yeah. There's a way the phone automatically just it just goes on the side. Goes on the side and because I find that so rude. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, mean, I find like, it very oh rude, God. but also I can't multitask. Like I'm sending an email and then saying, mm. uh-huh, you were saying the other guy did what? Mm. I'm just like I'm going now I'm going to text the things well, that I'm saying. Then, yeah. Then the email has that guy said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right. I think you had a stroke, maybe. But, and, and then you realize you sent it to the wrong person. Nah. Yeah. I but I also empathize with that it. whole being spread thin because of social mm. media. Now may I have two Instagram accounts because of that. I was like, you know what? There's so many people who reach out from Can We Talk who want mm. to connect with Belinda, the founder and CEO mm. of Can We Talk, and they are really interested in getting to know you personally. But then I'm like, I want my Instagram that has just my people mm. that I'm putting my, that I also give, like, I actively want to know what's going on with them and yeah. this. And I just made the decision to separate the two. I was just like, yeah, when I'm on this one, I sort of have like work hours for it. Like, it's like, mm. yeah, now Belinda, the can we talk person is on. And it's not that I'm, we're two different people. We're yeah. one in the same, but it helps me with the mental boundary. Of, yeah. Okay. Now I'm this way, now I'm this way. So I, I can switch off the other one sometimes. Like if I'm on leave, like for my personal things, eh? I'm not going on my Instagram. Linda for can told we talk. Us. I told she told me, she was like, let me tell you something, I'm going on my back today. No, because I met this guy after Even his birthday. You are a, can't find me. You won't Joe touch was me. glowing. I, I was like, yeah, mama, where are you from? Yeah, it's like, I travel. I said, okay. I was very me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I didn't look, that's not what I look like. Yeah, great. This great. is what me after a lot of work. Refreshed. This is after Alan. I'm even in a tie. Yeah, I was like, okay. Well, Not true. taken. Even me, mine came. I said, yeah. I rarely, I'm still struggling with the switching on and Switching, off. but also with can we talk people have a certain hmm. people think we're psychologists they yeah. just come up to you and you'll be like now you're in the middle of your day and yeah. someone just comes i almost killed myself and, and i'm like, like hey. bro it's just 10 a.m <laughs> allow me just f- start my day properly also maybe ask how are you <laughs> like no meanwhile no, you're right. no greeting no please. they're just like so yesterday i tried to kill myself i'm like yeah and you're like eh that's heavy information you just <laughs> But what me. I want to do actually this this month is just get a WhatsApp that because people just be randomly video calling. You guys, me. WhatsApp like, is oh. the other thing that needs to over get mm. what I don't know what they need to do there, but I'm so done with WhatsApp. Yeah. Because WhatsApp has all your work people, yeah. it has all your family. It's everyone. It has it's like you can't be off. Yeah. Like and everyone sort of expects a, an instant reply. You don't respond you to your mother, sorry. but you're online. <laughs> Not my mom sending an audio. <laughs> Three minutes later, I texted, you haven't responded. Mm. Did you find another mother? I'm just it's like, oh, what's up? Yeah, so your mom, she's very good at mm, she and the knife. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you're I betraying. Like, really? But no, it's um, a bit hard. So th- that was the question I was going to ask. So now, because of the conversations that you're raising, like people are going to start pouring out their mm. things. And <clears throat> I'm going into the philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> I think form determines content mm-hmm. so like the first time uh, we going on to youtube i started noticing that youtube shows mm-hmm. seemed like tv but i know that tv shows have certain time allotments and breaks mm-hmm. and all that because they had to put ads like it was the format there but now on youtube where you can literally do like a 10-hour video people yeah. still maintain that thing because 
the expectation is this is how our show is supposed to start like this and this yeah. even with this like I'll sometimes be like let's just do an episode which is audio only or let me do an episode which is an interview like shaking it up and I remember um Josie used to tell me like wait can you be consistent you're supposed to be a brand mm. supposed to have, even the algorithm yeah. is like you're it's supposed to have consistency to, to get doing, yeah. news. but I'm intentionally trying to shake it up mm. so I wonder do you find that because it's a brand i would think that people won't start coming to you expecting not just in the conversations but expecting mm-hmm. answers and when they come to you with things that are quite heavy what do you so by you the way us saying that doesn't mean that we are not open or we're not aware mm-hmm. i think i'm very aware that people come to can we talk to feel a certain way yeah. it's not just because of the game even when you check our social media there's mm-hmm. a warmth and like we're like your friends right mm-hmm. So I think we recognize that responsibility and which is why we're big on boundaries that if you come to me with something mm. that I can give you an answer to yeah I will but also I've seen that most people just want to feel seen and heard they're not necessarily looking for a for a, a, a advice or, yeah. or solution at that moment so personally what I've been doing is I'll listen to you or I will give you my thoughts or experience on the thing just making sure that yeah i see what you're saying if it's something beyond us now like maybe suicidal ideation mm-hmm. we do have a psychologist that we will refer you refer to, you to yeah. um because we're also aware that we are not equipped to handle mm-hmm. those right because why should we pretend that we are something that we're not mm-hmm. so we give you what you came for which is to feel seen and heard mm-hmm. um we'll listen to you we'll provide a space for you to talk and we wish you well i think <laughs> <laughs> but also yeah we know that it's it's i i, I don't think also because we are, the brand is so much of an extension of myself i don't yeah. think i know there is a difference but it's i'm not pretending to be something mm. like i am naturally a very sensitive and empathetic person so i will care me are talking but if someone comes to me with a problem mm. i'm now in the problem like uh uh-huh, what what so because it's so part of me like it's so innate yeah it's like i find it it's, it's not it's not like something i have to switch on the way i go to work and then i switch it on so because the brand is an extension of who we are i find jill is also the same like yeah. mm. you'll go to her with a problem she's someone who'll be like she'll engage even if she's tired sometimes when i see her <laughs> after an event <laughs> someone's after like, event, so you'll see her eyes going guy, like <laughs> no i think she will stay time and to catch me is when i'm hungry because i'm just like my eyes are going like crazy. yeah but, but i'll mm. see you listen i'll yeah. see you still but also the quiet the thing that i really like about the dynamic is I can look at her and know exactly what she's thinking or what she wants in that moment. So we've learned to sort of so you look at her you're like she's tired. So you know you come join the conversation this person looks away. Mm. And then you have this this going and then you so you sort of have to bounce off each other which is I think something that works to balance it out or someone will be like I'm exhausted. Yeah. So someone has to hold mm. the space or engage in the conversations until that person has like taken a breather properly and then and also i think with the way we've done our communities eh it's it's sort of removing the need for everyone to come to us mm. that's why our spaces are the way they are that if we're having like this sunday we have support group okay. at support group i don't sit there and act like i know it all mm. everyone is sharing what they've learned from their experiences we are playing the even at chillan connected yeah. we are playing the game so there is a sharing because that's what community is you mm. don't have to look to one person mm. to for your needs right mm. Mm. it's you can get them from everywhere, everywhere so when they yeah. come for these spaces it's like yeah get it from everyone it doesn't have to be from just the two of yeah. us mm. so sort of decentralizing mm. <laughs> the, the warmth the warmth <laughs> it's it's here everyone can mm. can access it and everyone yeah. can be part of it so i think the spaces also really help with that I keep saying this thing uh the <clears throat> three most beautiful words in the English language are I need help because mm. it allows someone to then love yeah. you and you feel seen and you know things move except <laughs> so, do you do you be seeing me and then you know what I'm feeling <laughs> we're going to work on it <laughs> and did you know how am what I feeling I'm right feeling? now I feel I'm feeling weird because like they are very low and us <laughs> we're just here smiling at each other that's a yeah. connection you're we'll smiling at about each wrestling other. the whole time <laughs> But that's the thing. We're not all communication Wrestling, has to be oral. Basketball. Maybe yeah. you guys are Things there. Like yeah. Your minds are, mm. are doing this 
That's where here we no, are. No, but like I think we're also people. kind of like the same person. So some mm-hmm. some things go unsaid. I'm mm-hmm. like, oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, like I can see him when he's like, yeah. he's got to do his, I'm got to do my duty. And you see him go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He goes in, I'm like, I know, I know he's feeling yeah. that thing. Yeah. Um, all right, so I figured we could try playing some of the cards. Eh, how did you feel about getting them? You, you tell me what, 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 how would you describe the content? I'm pleasantly surprised by the way. I feel it's very different from anything we've ever done, which excites me. Same. Because, okay. yeah more conversations mm. um so I, the questions i'm excited to play them with my people because there's no right or wrong yeah. i think that's the thing i'd like it's like <laughs> what's what you think yeah we're not <laughs> we're not he, throwing his here. big big words uh, retro bits of course he, he so threw them in no, i guess i've changed yeah but they're all understandable mm. even if you went to p7 and that's where i stopped i it's, think you can understand doable, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I also really love you guys' color, brand color. Yeah. 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 It's really different from yeah. what we've done. And I'm excited to see what level of conversations we'll have mm-hmm. with this in Ami. Like mm. we've, we talked about already, we were like, ha, huh, this one is going to be interesting for Chill and Connect. Yeah. Because that's exactly it's very. Yeah. yeah. So I'm coming for Chill and Connect, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Alan and I. Please. We already I, talked I've always wanted to attend the events, but you see that picture is like, looks like cool people only allowed. Ah, yes. I, I, I knew you are not doing that. The branch was the one. By the days. Hey, the one that goes around. I don't know. What did you think I was doing? It's just a deal. Yeah, but it's just a deal. It's just a deal. I thought we had a connection. No. It's one of the hands. You're like, hmm. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> As I'm a director, please. Let's be I also really like the quotes. I'm such a quote person. Mm. So I really yeah, love the, the quotes. Yeah, literally, her whole life <laughs> depends on quotes. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, yeah. Quotes just just put language to things you mm. don't have to. Like, you know, yeah. someone, my, um, someone I think was interested in meeting me, so I asked a friend of mine. And then the friend sent me the text message. She was saying, like, I want to meet this guy back now. How many books am I going to have to read? I'm going to be throwing a quote for and we're going for ice cream. He's talking about the Middle East. People, I'm a normal person. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. When we started working on this thing, I told Joe, yes, I'm please. going to contribute to the question. You guys, eh, and then that you one day, was like, I googled philo, so I said, eh, this is a hard performance. <laughs> have your Google yeah. by. Mm. All right. Mm. <laughs> so, the cards are philosophical questions and I think we try to put some situations or scenarios to draw attitudes and things from people so uh, it's designed with uh, <clears throat> a quote at the back on the, what's this deep purple on the white side there's the theme and then the question so we're going to play a few I think I'm going to be using some of them in my interview For sure. so Obviously. I'll always have to be saying that yeah these cool <laughs> people are the ones who did it so um, Alan do you want to start uh, I think what you can do is read the card and then. Okay. But also, so many people had always said, "Do you know about? Do you know Joel?" Mm. Like he was always like, "Have you all met?" <laughs> I paid them. I was like, "Manangi, can they come to my house? Let it seem natural. Just sprinkle it there somehow." Mm-hmm. Okay, <clears throat> Alan, uh, you can uh, read the talk and then uh, the thing. Yeah. Yeah, I want you to answer your card. Mm-hmm. Not the purple. <laughs> That's the purple. Yeah, that. <laughs> oh, uh, Alan goes first. Wow. Um, dead serious. Do the dead have any right beyond respect for their remains and memory? Should societies invest resources in preserving the physical bodies or digital memory of the deceased? Uh, when does the historical explanation, exploration clash with respect for the deceased and their cultural heritage? That, that had to be the first God, the serious card. <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> like, when he started it, I was like, cool. Okay, Dave, mm. okay. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Let me hear your answers. Do the, do the dead have any rights? I mean, um, what can I say? If 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 there's some if if there's something they left behind, some instructions they left behind, like, and if they make sense, <laughs> if they make sense, <laughs> like uh, when we saw every time the sunset, like when, when, <laughs> when, 
<laughs> when when Josie passed, she didn't have to say it, but we all mm. knew we had to take on her foundation mm. and make that move. So we feel like that one we need to to do and push and stuff like that. But then like me me personally, like I I used to care so much about what would happen to me if I died. Da, 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 da. But then like Danny DeVito in one of the shows said like. If I'm dead, I'm dead. Mm. <laughs> like throw me in the trash. Like you don't need to bury me. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> like I won't know. I won't be around. I won't like I've like I've run my race. I've done my part. I'm done. Like what you do with me after that is. What if it affects your spirit? Guy, <laughs> then the trash bag, trash card. Yeah, you're talking spirits. So, and what's the theory? You want Joel to? <laughs> no, we are all open, Joel. Please, all diverse views. I asked Joel a heaven question. Like, would I believe in heaven? But like, let me answer the question either way. I'd shoot his eyes <laughs> did society mm-hmm. invest resources in preserving the physical bodies or did you miracle resist? I, I, I don't think so. I feel like it's... Uh, no, what I meant is like, oh, yeah. I was thinking about, um, you remember when we were at uh, Josie's funeral mm. and they were playing all those videos of her mm. and her dad said, um, you know, I didn't know that she was having all these conversations and all of that. Mm. There was a kind of, um, I guess I remember it's a, a joy that he kind of had and like, oh, I didn't know this about her mm. and I could see her alive and well. And I could see that as, okay, there's a memory of it because I compared it with my dad who said that he does not remember the faces of his Mm. grandfather and all those Mm. people. Like, we take for granted that we have pictures Mm -hmm. and we forget that our memories are very... Fickle. Yeah, they are fickle, like they disappear. So he remembers the feeling, but he doesn't remember what they look what like. They I feel like, like that's yeah. the worst thing. Like, yeah, the people have lost, I'm so happy I can still hear their voice, their photos. Mm. And... So my issue with that is like it's it's never going to be fair. It's like mm. society is not going to want to keep everyone's memories. They'll pick a select few. What do you because, think? Instagram of course, is? this was a hero for the country. So like, let's keep his body. Like this one did this. Mm. It's like mummification. Like the, like uh, in death. Death, yeah. like the pharaohs. Yes. Like all the pharaohs. Like their mummies are there. Yes, but how about those who worked? Those who mm. built the pyramids? Those who did what? So like, for preserving, since we can't keep for everyone, it's going to be for a select few. Mm. I don't think that's fair. So yeah. Rather, no, I. That question also partly came because I was looking at, I'm going to think I'm a geek, but I was watching a documentary on the catacombs in Paris and how they were positioned in such a way that you had to see like the dead. And there was a sort of agreement that, okay, the traditions that we have came from those people and they set this up and we owe them something as tradition. Mm. And we're talking about now modern life is hide the, the grave like you're, you're supposed to remove death from the figure and then death mm. becomes like a, a statistic that you see mm. so like now at the beginning when the first stuff happened in gaza like it was horrific mm-hmm. but then after a while it it's your brain is telling you this is horrible mm-hmm. but it then becomes another yes, news so item like, and then you scroll and then there's jay-z then you scroll yeah. and then there's something else so in a way i was wondering what is the impact of of death right now like do we see it i see a lot of digital stuff is about living forever about extending Mm. health it's all you know how can you live a full life but i'm wondering about what what how do we pay respects to the dead part of why i have that skull there is to remind me that Mm. you know it's coming it's so funny for me in canada (laughs) 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 i was looking for it (laughs) Where For me, I remember in Canada, the first time I went through, because they bury differently, right? Like here, everyone's family has your place in the village or wherever you have your burial ground. Mm. And I remember the first time I was, there was this beautiful, beautiful w- w- place I used to walk. And then I didn't know there was a, what do they call it? Like a graveyard. And I remember being like, whoa, because I realized all oh, these people walking. are dead because <laughs> it's so different here. You know, even if it's a big family, at most yeah. you're going to see like 30. But no, this is acres. And yo, mm. that thing was huge. And you have like the ones who just have a slab with their name on. Mm. And then you have the ones who have like Large. big angels and this. Mm. And I remember I looked around like, rah, where are all these people? Like, because I had never <laughs> thought of death that way because I'm so used to the way you see it here mm. like you go you see your far yeah there's a number of people but seeing thousands that's the first time i was like yeah. and these are people who this are is crazy they're not necessarily relatives but yeah all of you all of you are here, are here. and it's like these people are all somewhere because mm. these are so many people yeah and even me the gaza thing actually seeing dead 
photos, I think, really desensitizes us to. It does. Now, you, like I you said, you scroll and it's just like, oh, it's another feed, mm. feed post. You go to the next, to the next, to the next. But yeah. I think, like I said, it's the saddest thing not to remember someone's face. And because, like I said, we bury in the village, you come back to Kampala, you live your life. Mm. Then you remember around Christmas, you're like, eh, this guy, Bambi. Mm. That's it. What's up with his grave? And that's it. So I think. For me, that's the saddest part. It's just like, so 10 years from now, I won't remember what my grandfather looks like or mm. know who he was or... Because even with phones, those, yeah. someone can steal your phone. Maybe that's Things why you happen. see Instagram is there. Because my people who pass, their Instagram is there. You can, mm. And you know, it's the scariest thing with social media. Well, now they allow you to, you can send them their death certificate and they would pull yeah. their yeah. page yeah. or whatever. But for me, it gives me a comfort to go there and just be like, hey, you know, like it's like a digital album. Mm. Because even you guys, yeah. you didn't have albums going up. We did, we did no. but <laughs> I'm not going to carry that whole thing. But what I've done, <laughs> what, wow, I've done Jill. what I've done is like, you know, those passport pictures of people, mm. like everyone who dies and just like, give me your passport picture. I always collect those because those are in my wallet. I can just walk around with them. Mm. And a random day, I'll miss you, think about you, pull it out and be like, oh. Mm. This is. Mm. And now I saw the future of death is going to be trees and holograms. Have you seen that? I saw that and I was. Um, I didn't what if they cut down that. your tree? Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> then you're gone. No, I think you have to say something about your likeness. Because now, mm. uh, you see how they use the Tupac holograms and whatnot. Uh -huh. Like, because you're a public figure, uh. even with the AI thing now, they train a lot of that AI on just information that's on the internet but that information is created by people like if you mm. went to reddit reddit for me is the you whatever problem you have there's someone it's, in the yeah. world who's had it yeah, yeah. my toe is painting but only in this place yeah. then there's a guy there well, of course it's what happened <laughs> and then they share now all of that is being fed into chat gpt so the question is that when you're interacting with ai now you're interacting with like the effort of all these human mm. beings that existed but now what about your likeness because mid journey and all these things can create images mm. so the question then was like the taylor swift thing when they were making pornographic images of her mm. she's like how can you do this uh, yeah, but sure. you know it's taylor swift so mm. people moved in but now what happens with you if you've not expressly said don't use yeah. this because the terms and conditions of social media are like accepted yeah accepted. i heard that yeah. you'll even be able to go to a grave and ask like your dad like what do you think about this problem now because they'll have all his information from like social media and what nah, so they can sort me. of so it's like you'll die but never die so you can go and ask and Why? interact with the person because they're using their information to know the mm. type of things maybe the advice you would give you what line, this, of, thought you what line of thought so you, people will be able to yeah. still they'll make it interact with their dead I people which i think about that. thank god i won't be there because yeah, that's gonna same. be messed up you guys are young man the wings are coming now <gasps> not yeah, to your granddad not, like <laughs> not to your granddad let's get a train that walks <laughs> slowly let's start yeah. slowly slowly well, yeah, you guys are still chilling <laughs> when you get a train <laughs> they'll still all that money you. there won't be any i assure you there won't be any money for your holograms <laughs> work hour yeah so we're still good guys still uganda good. man visit uganda um <laughs> You can see how joyful the questions are. <laughs> we are exhibitions. Like, <laughs> where are the holograms, we are holograms. for Karamoja? <laughs> they won't be seen. You guys, do you, do you realize when we were kids, when we were kids, we had this guy, even in the 90s, you'd open the newspaper and just see, you know, they'd be showing the atrocities in uh, Northern Uganda. Mm. So you just open, as a kid, and you just say, oh, this person has no lips. And you're like, what? I feel like, yeah, but Uganda is safe. Like, I couldn't <laughs> reconcile those two points. Yeah. And I feel like we just moved on. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Ugandans <clears throat> will move on. Okay. Who's next? I will go next. Don't worry, be happy. Happiness in intelligent people is We're the rarest thing. Are we doing the quote? It's, yeah. it's up to her. <laughs> oh, okay. the, the rarest thing I know. And the question is, do you think there is a negative correlation between intelligence and happiness? That is, does being very smart and questioning inevitably affect how happy a person can be? Yes. Ignorance is bliss. Eh? Yes. <laughs> I'll, I'll laugh at every question because I know it's, they came from Joel and I, like, I know where they're coming <laughs> Shut from. Up, but, <laughs> Shut up! 
Um, the reason why I think this is if someone when like a smart person questions things, not because they're saying I'm mm. asking questions to know why mm. are we doing this, why are we doing it this way. It's not that I'm opposing it. I'm just I just want to know what are we working with. Yeah. And sometimes people can think you're very exhausting, I think. <laughs> like <laughs> Can't you just do without asking questions? Why do you have to know A to Z? Do you have to um, know everything that there is? But I think also, I don't know, happiness is relative. Someone mm. can say I'm happy, mm. but I mean, they don't know anything else. That's all they know. So what can they compare against mm. the happiness that they know? So mm. I think when you're smart, you choose what kind of happiness you would like. For your all the quality of happiness there is someone can say oh i'm broke unhappy or i don't know i have a small house oh i i don't know mm. but i'm just like yeah because no. i don't know if you've lived in a house that is bigger than that and can comparison you know, is the thief of joy mm. it is but so you quotes. can only know <laughs> <laughs> you can only know um i guess you can only know if you're truly happy if you've gone through you know, stayed in a small house, stayed in a big house, done this, done that. And then you can just engage and say, oh, I'm happier here. I'm not happy here, but yeah, mm. happiness is relative. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Bill? Oh, my card? No, what do you oh, think? Oh, what I think? Um, <laughs> I think... So for me, I'm in between. I feel like, yes, because with intelligence, I used to be such a seek of truth. You know those people who just want to know things? Mm. And as I've grown older, I remember when <laughs> I lost my sister and I got into this hole of wanting to know more about death. I watched some documentary mm. on Netflix about death where they get people who have done near death, who have gone through near death experiences. Da, 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 da. And I picked up so much information, but it didn't. I was like, why do I need to know this? It just makes you sad. Even with like staying up with news these days, yeah. I really pick, I think I only try to read Shemo Polot's newsletter and stop there because, <laughs> because he gives me enough information that I need to yeah. know what's happening around the world. But the more I know, the sadder mm, it feels. It because, feels yeah, <laughs> yeah That's true. so there's that. Mm. But then also, I feel like with the question saying intelligence, I feel like there's an, an intelligence of knowing when to, when mm. to stop where. Mm right because mm -hmm. i can like I, it falls in i guess emotional or i i don't know what what form of intelligence that is but i feel like part of intelligence is knowing like i've known enough yeah this so, is enough this I, is I should enough stop for here. me yeah mm -hmm. so i think in that regard then you can still be happy but again also happiness doesn't stay forever so <laughs> will you not be intelligent because you're trying to be happy yeah <laughs> even if you don't know you will be you'll sad you'll still be sad so, we're still seeing the same news but what, what you I said think. it's um, about um news i just i was like this is it's sad. all right it's, i don't need to know that deep to know what mm -hmm. is happening everywhere i'll get highlights here and there but why am i seeing dead and you know my, my parents always tell me it's... you people know too much because of the phones right mm. like for them mm. at most mm. they knew yeah, they, it's not that they didn't know what was happening internationally. They knew, but still they knew. Just the things, just they, needed the things they needed to know. Because really. also pre-packaged, you get it from one source. Uh -huh. They're reading the newspaper or you're watching it on TV. Yeah, but now us, yeah, you're seated here and you know 1,000 people. someone are, in Palestine yeah. streaming right Literally, now. Literally. And, and worse like, is, after that, what if it's like a link on Twitter and then there are people commenting. Yeah. Then you're going to everyone's and then, thoughts. Uh -huh. Guys, when you go to the comment section, eh? Mm -mm. That's where the devil is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not even the link they've shared. It's the comment section that will yeah. end your life. So I mean, that's what and I think. any post, now I avoid the comment section. It's like, I don't need to be there. Mm. I if went it's a happy Twitter video. last week, I said it's okay. Because it feels like, literally how yeah. Twitter started feeling is when I would open it, I would feel like everyone is shouting at me. <laughs> like, in the morning, you've woken up and it's like, mm. this has happened, this has happened, this has happened. Oh, did you know this mm. and this and this? And it's yeah. like, I really don't need to know this And I hate the tone they use, like, you must know. I'm mm. like, I really don't need to know. Even Tim, Tim Ferriss talked about mm. it in some book of his I was reading. It's like, I don't need... You don't need that much information. Yeah. Pick oh, so a good quality source. So mm. that's why I talked to Shemo Polot's mm. letter. Because he goes through 
sources for you. <laughs> He's done the hard work. <laughs> yeah, he picks the good quality. Ah, no, I know what's happening in the have world, this, but I don't uh, need to know everyone. Have you seen these TikTokers who they'll go and watch like a lengthy video for you and summarize it in like seconds, so you don't have to go and watch the whole thing. Now those ones, I don't like them because I want to read. Sometimes the, the person starts the gist thing. and then they're like, guys, let me first make my hair, then I come and tell you <laughs> that story. I'm you. like, <laughs> now we are sitting here waiting for you to get your hair done. Yeah. Okay? So oh, those are the guys I'm like, uh-huh, mama, come and tell us. So she's going to make her hair. Tell us what happened. So, yeah. Okay, now also that you know all this information, then what? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay. Ale. And you? It, I want to... I was, I was hoping you don't, you don't ask me because <laughs> I have like a, a, a deep answer for this. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh, Come and, through. And of course, if I'm asked, I'm going to tell the answer. But like, I, I was hoping you don't ask me. So I am, I, I regard myself a, a highly intelligent person, but not like intelligence for the world and what and stuff, but like for me, like who I am mm. in this world and what, and I always had this from, I, I always tell my mom I have memories of age one, two, wow. like from when I was young, like I knew myself, I knew. Disturbing. That must be disturbing. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, embarrassing thing. It's, it's, I'm, I'm going to end this with saying, there, I'm going to end this with saying, this is like my curse. And this is why I am the way I am today. Mm. And so so I knew my I knew my existence. I knew my role. When I had a, a, a bigger brother, I knew he was insecure. I had to act like young. Like from age two, just to make this guy happy, hype him up, do all these things. Like that's, I knew that is what I was. And then I saw my parents, because I was born in, like, in an IDP camp. So I, I just saw my parents struggling. I knew it would be hard, but I knew that they were <laughs> right. Yeah. I was like, but he slides over and through that. Really that. Know what I'm so, so, but sprinkles, like I knew they sprinkles. were together, and I knew like what they needed to even bring them together was like a nice, nice boy, well mannered, mm. doing well in school. So I like I was doing that. I was the best in school. I was like very good, like focused and stuff. And that's why I tell people like I got depressed at age ten. <laughs> like, like when my dad passed, like I saw that gap, mm. and like not the gap of now that he's not here, but I just saw how okay he was slightly more uh ahead of my mom when it came to like running a home and all these things and i, I figured she's going to struggle mm. with this and it's going to be hard and then so like all the things that i had like as dreams and stuff and like i'll achieve this i saw myself not achieving any of those things mm. so, so the world I, I saw the world crumbling like yeah. literally so i had to change like completely change realize it's not going to be through me i'll not do this but that's why when i go to secondary i told you like mm. it was less about school but more about like making friends and doing what because i realized these friends i'll be with them for a longer time i'll be able to connect i'll know how to deal with different kinds of people because i figured that's what is going to be so the short answer to the question yeah, is intelligence is yeah intelligence, <laughs> it's, a happiness. It's, a it's, a it's very very hard to to be happy mm. if your mind is fully aware of like the end like the scope of the entire thing mm. it's it's like you you uh-uh. You, you told a story of uh-uh. of, a, of a woman who said she's more intelligent than the husband, <laughs> and then she realized like her marriage became good when she had to play the role and she knew like, okay I have to come back and be humble mm. and be nice and this man will feel like he's the man yeah. word, and then they're like, yeah. like that that that's the bad thing with that like you know Yikes. and see and you know how every single answer is going to affect everyone and then you like. Yeah. I yeah. see people giving things of like hope for the future and just there looking like, yeah, but this and this. How? Who explain how? Yeah. Mm. Uh, wow. Okay. <clears throat> Mine is like, okay, so I don't think, I want to put this, I think it matters why you're happy. So, I know happiness is generally seen as a good goal. But I find that there are certain forms of happiness that you can use to hide from the world. Like, mm. uh, I'm, I have an iffy relationship with alcohol because the first time I had it, I felt like, you mean I drink this thing and... Bro, I was happy then with the first time. I said, this is At 1 a.m. I was like, yeah, can you just live yeah, with joy? <laughs> Even yeah. though you know what's going to happen the next day. Yeah. So I, I find that, but that's different for me than say, if I've spent time with a friend, Mm-hmm. and I leave. It's it, There's an elevation, but every time I go back to the memory, it, it gives me something more. Mm-hmm. So um, I put happiness in an unethical <laughs> category. I'm not saying it's unethical in terms of it's evil. I'm just saying that it's neutral. Like someone can derive pleasure from doing something horrible mm-hmm. or someone can derive pleasure from being ignorant of the things that are going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think the more 
intelligent you are, I think especially when you're young, you probably suffer. Yes. Mm. Because like you, you're not quite sure how to calibrate and put boundaries. Mm. Like you were saying about yourself, I think wisdom and intelligence are not necessarily That's correlated. Like, yeah. There's something mm. more than intelligence that you need to act intelligently in the world. Mm. And to me, it's like, are you getting the things that you want? Are you able to contextualize yourself in the world? And also, do you realize that there's some pain you have to feel in order for you to be human? Otherwise, you're not being mm -hmm. like if you're always, you know, well, it's just always, you're always oh, happy. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, they feel like a puppy. You're like, yeah, you're a person. Like, what's going on? Life is good. Uh, I know those people. You've been such a wedding. Is there in the bar? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was going to come with all that joy. Just pretend to be on the phone. <laughs> Someone calls you. <clears throat> all right. We're saving the best for last. <laughs> the evil eye. The world is a dangerous place to live, not because of evil people, but because of the people who don't do anything about it. Albert Einstein. All right. <clears throat> what constitutes evil? And are there people who are beyond redemption, or does everyone mm. have a chance to be better? Mm -mm. She was like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Why you Someone mean? came to her mind like, mm. Who is that person? That one is beyond the altar. Please, please, <laughs> there. Please that Jesus one. Carry the Lord. I was so hard. She's like, mm. No. <laughs> there are people who, I mean, if you're still, I don't know, past a certain age, we're just like, let's leave you to Christ. <laughs> That's, it. That's it. So there are definitely people who are beyond redemption. Yes. Is it I because so. they will, they've just refused to change? Or the effort to change them is just too great. <laughs> like there are too many, you know, there are too many things. Like there's someone who asked me sometimes to explain something. I said the issue has too many points yeah. mm. and life <laughs> is too short <laughs> for us to get into that. So yeah. mm -hmm. first you didn't answer. Yeah, you first, don't answer your, first. first your, so you first to ask a question. <laughs> uh he likes summarizing all that. Mm. Yeah, that's how I look clever. Duh. <laughs> Uh, I think evil consists in the eye that sees evil everywhere. Hmm? To... Mm. Mm. Mm? has <laughs> taken us... No, I... Okay. Guys, yeah, this is what... This is, he has I'll, talk, I'll talk my church things. Mm. So, I think of the time when the church was really in charge, in, in like Europe. They don't know call it that, but they called it the Dark Ages. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was quite weird. I think because you're so close to what is deemed right, that in some way you the evil you commit is seen as i'm fathering good i'm doing this for the sake of the church or like mm. i'm doing this because you're evil like there are people who in their minds are so well-meaning mm -hmm. that they don't see the actual thing that they're doing mm. they are saying whatever i'm doing this pain is temporary it's for mm. a greater goal mm. now i think that's the closest you can come to evil without you being insane because at that point there's no way for someone to convince you because you're sure you're right mm. i don't think someone is doing evil and thinking i'm evil <laughs> like i think so that's a rare add, thing do you judge what's evil based on intention or action now you're taking us very deep <laughs> no. um i suppose for myself i'll judge by my intention and action uh but for everyone else I will try to hear the intention, but I think the action is the more impactful thing. Mm -hmm. Because I might intend to be helping you, but what I've actually done mm -hmm. is I've damaged you. Mm -hmm. Now, if your intention is not informed by the actions you're taking, mm -hmm. I start to question your intention. That's why I'm going back to, if you have a, an opinion that is beyond criticism, like it's up in some otherworldly realm, mm -hmm. there's no reason, there's no one who can convince mm -hmm. you that what you're thinking is it's wrong. wrong. I would think that, yeah, I believe this is correct. Like, say, okay, as uh, at a certain point, I felt like, um, what was the belief I had? No, I thought, you know, everyone who doesn't believe in Christ is going to hell and going mm. to burn, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Now, at some point, I am meeting people and say, so you think I'm going to burn in hell? <laughs> and then I would do this weird thing where I'd go, not me, but God. Yeah. So I'm like, but they said to me, <laughs> but you are tag. still holding on to the belief. Mm. Yeah. So why don't you say it with your chest and go and argue with God? Don't you argue with God? <laughs> so I said, by the way, can't I go and argue with God? I'm like, God, no, nah, I don't think this is correct. Yeah. So if I, I think if you have that distance, at least there's still a person there. When you mm. completely equate yourself with a principle, your intention is now so pure that your actions uh, can never mm. give you feedback. Mm. To me, actions are supposed to give me feedback. Like I think that's why people can forgive a mistake. Mm -hmm. But if someone keeps doing something, you realize that, by the way, now, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's a problem. It's like you're not receiving feedback from the thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that there are some people who are probably beyond redemption, but it's only because life is too long. Um, uh, this is the most contradictory opinion I have. If someone were to sexually or physically hurt someone in my family, I don't know what I, I would I, I, I would do terrible things to them. Mm. I can't reconcile that with the fact that I don't think that that should make that action legal. Like, I don't mm. think legally it should be like, hey, that mm. person uh, stabbed this one's mother, now let me go and kill. Like, mm. I, I, I don't think a society that is like that can hold together. Yeah. Mm. But I can't reconcile that with my own mm. personal feelings. So that's why I was asking if, it, if you judge it based on intentional or action. action. Because, like, you killed someone, maybe I killed them because they hurt my little sister right but i still killed someone mm. but i have a good reasoning behind it am i an evil person or... it's hard to tell <laughs> i guess a little bit of and ju ju justification like that's like what you say that's what mm. i was going to say like even people who are being evil at the time they do not know that they're being, they're being evil. evil for them they have justified they have a really? reason of why they're doing mm. what they're doing it's very hard for someone people, yeah. Yeah. like have you done something knowing it's bad and didn't feel anything as you were doing it. I mean, some things. Yeah, okay, good, good. That's very well. Bad one. So. We're not talking about... <laughs> We're not talking. You, know, you know that uh, mean one. <laughs> when we were like, oh, how do you know that the <clears throat> passionate times are going to be fun? Hmm. They had that picture of, we're not supposed to be doing this. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's when you know. That's your hair. Fire! <laughs> so. No, I think there are things you do <coughs> knowing they are wrong, but you go ahead and do them. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe they don't have a big consequence. Yeah, the consequence. You're just yeah. like, yeah, it's neither here nor there. But also, when you think about it, it might have a consequence for you, not anyone else. Right? So, those you're like, it's my problem, I'll deal with it. It's not affecting <laughs> anyone. So, it's mm. a bad thing. I've done it. I know it is bad, but I've still done it. Mm. Yeah, I mean, like, they're, well, they're, they're wrong in that moment. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's the thing that remains curious. But like, also, why I, am I, I, I think it like the mm -hmm. things that you do for your, like in that sense, if you keep doing them, like if you look at now, like what's that serial killer who started off? He just enjoys cutting animals. Oh my that god, he was doing it for himself, yeah, right. But because it's, it's bad, sudden, like there's yeah. an energy it carries that eventually it affects other people. Other people yeah. That if you're doing bad, like let's look at addiction, right. Uh, very controversial. I don't think addiction is evil or whatever. Um, but like, about to say, eh? yeah. <laughs> but let's say Cancer. I'm doing drugs, right? And I know I shouldn't be doing them. They're affecting me. But I'm, I'm mm. independent. What, 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 what? I'll do it. I'll do it. But at a certain point, it will start to affect my family. Mm. And it's not that I'm doing it to affect them. I'm doing it for myself. For me, yeah, yeah. I see, but like you said, some of the things you do, you're just like, the consequences. It's too small. Mm. <laughs> we'll deal with it when it comes. And until you, you're drunk, and then you drive, and then you kill people you on kill the road. Someone. Yeah. <laughs> you just what a lovely drink. podcast <laughs> episode. <laughs> fun, <laughs> yeah. fun. But like, I, I have time. personally met evil people. Like, I have people around me who are like, like deep, deep. And is like when I've tried to talk, are you saying Joel or because you're looking <laughs> at me? Yeah, no, like like in, in in my life growing up and work and stuff. And mm. when you meet them and try to understand and be like, I want to know why you did this. Mm. They always have justifications of why they're mm. doing it. They feel like they're the greater good. Like they know what's good for this person. That's why we decided to do it. Like I've grown up around them, and then the best yeah. thing to do was just like completely separate, because the idea is it's narcissistic. Like yeah. they mm. they it's like. They know they are doing this to help, yeah. unless you I, cry I in front some, of me and you like do that. what, mm -hmm. and you miss your exams, and you're like, I don't care, but me, I know I'm going to teach you this lesson, mm. and you have no other way to go. <laughs> That's the thing. You said teach someone a lesson. I know someone who is evil, really evil. Like, there are ways in which they want to teach someone a lesson is like a life threatening <laughs> lesson. Like, mm. this could end your life today and now. That is the lesson I want to teach you. It's not yeah. like, you know how your parent says, okay, um, you did this. You won't go out, or you're not allowed to. I don't know something, mm. but it's neither here nor there. It's yeah, just it's not to. But imagine you do something, and your parent says, "No, sit home. No medication for you." Mm. I mean, that's evil. And I feel like Thinking. also what you said is there on an institutional level. Like it's like <laughs> yeah, there are those institutions that are there and there. They have all the mm. justifications for why they're for doing all the what things, they're doing. Yeah. Oh yeah, 
like, rah, you guys mm. really don't see? Yeah. Like, yeah. And it's like, no, but you have to. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh, God. <coughs> yeah. I recommend reading The Banality of Evil. Mm. It's an old book. But there's also a documentary I need to be put into YouTube. And it's about the trials of the, um, the people who are working in the Nazi camps mm. at Nuremberg. And the surprising thing was, people thought, like, you know the way you see Nazis in movies, like they're mm -hmm. evil, like they're, they're deriving joy from it. Mm -hmm. And then the guys who showed up were no with kids. And when they even saw the things they were doing, like, oh my God, I can't believe it. But they were not remarkable. Mm. The only thing they kept saying is, I'm just doing my job. Yeah. So for me, the, the thing that I've always jumped on is like, yeah, as long as you have to justify what you're doing, mm. to me, there's, that means there's some part of you that you're having to quiet down. Mm. Something that's saying, this is not right. Mm, that's okay. uh, when there's no thought at all, yeah. to me, then there's no reasoning with you. There yeah. is no feedback. It's just a thing that feels good mm. and you're doing it. Okay. To me, that's I, terrifying. I <laughs> See how I've converted. Yeah. <laughs> do you think kids? Do you think there are kids who are born evil? Yes. Like, have you? <laughs> Jill, like you've met a child who every, you think she knows someone who's a narcissist. She knows some evil person. No, but you see, the thing, why are you like, the thing, like, like no. the thing of, of <laughs> where you are. <laughs> We no, but you see, but the thing of, of people being beyond redemption, like, do you think they're there are those like I keep going back to that Dharma guy because his thing mm, started when he was a kid. kid. Yeah. Like, like, like you think there's a kid they see yeah. who's not yet even ten you're like mm, this one mm, there's something. But the you rest say, of like, their life. you mentioned evil people. I don't think people get to that level of evil when they're like thirty, forty five. <laughs> It grows. It was there. <laughs> it, it, it's it the was way there. you water a plant, you're just like eh? it's a nature no, or nature. So you feel it's natural. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Natural. Someone does something at three, you're just like, oh, they're just a kid. They've but struggled that a cat. That that has stuck. They've struggled My a three year old cat. struggles a cat. Yeah. But I know those weird um, kids who so so you just like, you're like, yeah. as so a three year, year old, why did you even cut. think of doing this? Yeah. What do you think they'll Actually, do they're at so much 30? They're masculine. Mm. What do you think they'll do at 30? <laughs> With some sprinkle, sprinkle, some alcohol. That's They're finished. So, if people are an evil child. Because they can't understand. Like w w one of my kids was like was like that, yeah. But like 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 what see like see a card like put it by the tail like see this and do this and then oh so that childish like that. curiosity of yeah yeah. Like, yeah like, like, why would you do that like so like I, I it's one of the reasons why I got a dog so yeah. we have like, like a small Maltese also in the no, house no, and he started like that he started like pulling and stuff but then now he, the conversation was like hi how are you mm. are cool. oh, so you can yeah so like by, oh, by okay. showing that this is someone who we feed in the house mm. they're living they have feelings they get excited get what so like now he understands mm. pets and, and animals family, they're not that and then you see how parents are important now you mm. know the other parent is just there like yeah you yeah. kick the dog <laughs> now they're learning yeah. pull the tail <laughs> thank you thank you for saving us from what your child may have <laughs> um, I don't like that I got this, this you card. You can pick from any. The, the point was you know the funny card. thing is, I got a card that you talked about of fetishes. Oh, <laughs> let's, go. let's, go, like, let's go. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> okay. Doing that thing I like is the topic. Can <laughs> fetishes be expressions of individual sexual preferences or do question. they sometimes reinforce object? and harmful power dynamics. <sighs> Is it good, the whole point? To be objectified. Yeah. To be objectified. A fetish, I think. That's a good point, actually. It's, you're sucking someone's toes because, I don't know, you like <laughs> when they're taller than you in the moment, so yes. I guess. You think so? Well, for me, I feel like, I feel like fetishes come from whether the first sexual things you are exposed to. Like they come from somewhere. They don't come out of nowhere. You may have a fetish to be like a little girl, to act like a little girl because no. I want to be a girl. Because you never got to no. be a little girl. Like they're little things, right? And I don't <laughs> surely. So I think Marina, it's where did you pick that one? I don't know, it's the one that came to me. These are not she my views. She chose spicy. No, because you see those things, right? Okay. You'll see Documentaries where someone wants to act like a, a when they go into role a play, they want to go into weird things and this. And I feel like it's sex, like sexual preferences are so weird. Like it's a bodily thing. There's, I don't think there's a reason you can explain 
where you're turned on by someone's toes in right English I mean, that will make white. sense. So so you're going to tell, so when you see the white car you turn on? No. Why no. so, uh, is it? My, my, my so question I'm is a, a, a fetish is a natural thing like or is it something we just pick up on? So from That's what I know cuz I watched what's that thing on Netflix explained there mm. was a documentary mm. called Sex Explained that talked about fetishes mm. and how a lot of them come again whether from trauma or if you're exposed to let's say a certain type of porn or this so it starts brewing or let's say you are naturally a masculine woman always and then you want this need to do this so it's like a weird thing that comes from your experiences and the things you're exposed sat- to don't we have certain ways to like i'm a masculine woman and I, I don't know and yeah, that was just I, an I, example everyone maybe you're into <laughs> bdsm or something but they explained it like it comes from what happens something ordinary you were choking. Not the they want more. That's not enough. Ordinary joking. <laughs> ordinary joking. <laughs> that's that's a a problem. Problem. <laughs> of course. What? That that in itself is why we are asking. Is it because you said it's out. ordinary? <laughs> Someone else are going to hold them here and they're going to be like, "Why are you? Why are you choking?" Me? <laughs> and you let me know. I, I thought that it's was it. Sense. Like when yeah. you get to choking, I thought that's it. You. But do I feel like a lot of them are? related to harmful power dynamics i think mm. so yeah i think okay. so too. uh like the thing you said right mm. i've always found it weird uh, that little school girl sexy outfit mm-hmm. i i cannot that's a, i that's cannot that's one that came to my head it's just like mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. it doesn't like a skirt yeah. and it's cuz when we were young all you watched was britney spears in her car with like na 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 ponytails and socks and that's why i would get that from guys who watch anime maybe because <gasps> you know like anime is japanese also girls that, yeah oh like yeah, yeah anime too <laughs> you know in japan right But how come South Africans are not going that way? Because South African <laughs> kids also oh. wear. That's South Africa. Um, eh? Oh, a very big problem with the teenage pregnancies. Oh, oh. Especially all the... Oh, that is true. You know, I feel it's like a... I guess it's a fine line. I've never really understood. Like, I was in the same place as you when they were talking about what trauma is. So the first time I heard what a fetish is, it just means that you're giving something power that it doesn't inherently have. Like mm. there are people who find shoes sexy. They be like, mm, I'm gonna "Put a shoe here, what?" And they do things with it. They're like, "Huh?" Hey. Really? So it's like it's there's a broad spectrum. But mm. then there are other things which are like connected to human beings. Mm-hmm. And for me, it's because you then um, you use them to satisfy a certain pleasure. And I always wonder, is feeding this pleasure useful for me? Is it mm. that I get to? exercise those demons in that safe space no it or you i'm making it okay yeah not so like stop. for instance for me i cannot connect with that thing of a young school like i can't mm. i don't want to cross have, that line i have so many questions Even that about thing that where thing where people a lot of women have fetishes of like play pretend rap Yo. it's actually also very common i've had it a lot where it's like they want a guy to come in and as if forcefully yeah. and it's like Where does that come from like it for makes us to be like yeah that, that's that's okay. a fetish and yeah. it's okay that's the question no. with like young school girls I'm like so if this is your fetish where do we draw the line that you actually won't bring this to reality mm. if you're like a proper school girl she's just young 7 8 dress so up but doesn't mean that way. you think fetishes are would it be what's the word for it like immoral or no it's like, a hard like something could be immoral but What are the lengths that we can go to to determine what's going on in your head? Mm. Like right now when yeah, we have to wait till yeah. you've done something, mm-hmm. but imagine you knew oh this person was doing all this stuff and mm-hmm. something happens. There's a part of you that might go hmm, did, mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. did I did I miss this something? how did I yeah. miss it? Were we feeding it such mm-hmm. that now because like like there's a reason for me like sometimes people vanilla porn is the best. Yeah. Just right like you know if you keep going in the tubs <laughs> <laughs> waiting for the special menu stuff. now <laughs> you start looking for that video ah uh, <laughs> no i don't want yeah i guess fetish is also lie on a spectrum yeah. <laughs> like and, and i feel like there is there is like that's what i'm saying like the, the, the original like the, the first person who have like that particular fetish mm. came from an immoral Thank thing. you. Mm. And then it just kept getting watered down. Mm. Cuz like literally Cause, and someone is like when, when I was packing this stuff to come here like someone in office was talking about white toes. Like we asked like what's your fetish? You see? Like yeah. like okay. <laughs> you see? And then like then I asked him like 
like, like why? <laughs> like why? And he couldn't explain it. And I realized mm. like he just picked this off Twitter because yes. it's a thing of yeah, everyone says. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But maybe there's like that one person who started and like maybe his thing was like actually cutting them off mm-hmm. and eating them and like but saying like they get watered <laughs> down. So like the the schoolgirl like thing, maybe there was that one who actually wanted to have, mm. but then it gets watered down to no like mm. let my grown up wife just put on that outfit, mm. <laughs> and then like the maid thing, yeah. French maid, yeah, yeah. maid. maybe it's like you dress up like the maid. It came from the someone nurse. who actually, like, yeah. I think it's because we repress those things. So somehow, mm. like I've always wondered if you go to I was reading some report that in the U.S. and Europe, uh, the younger you are, the less sex you're now having. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, more so permissible things have become. It's yeah. almost like we thought, yeah, liberate people and people have a lot of sex. Now they're but having less. So they're like having yeah. less. So the article was talking about maybe there's some connection between the repression of like you keep that in that space, mm. such that the energy builds up and then you, you know, yeah, you yeah, exercise outlet, it there. Yeah, yeah. Because sex is not just. It's like have you seen an animal having sex? It can mm. look at you in the eye. Like yeah. a dog, and I'm, I'm looking at you like, this. and you're like, yo, bro, what the hell? Man, what's the matter? Man, what's the matter? But you, I hate, there's some. I hate the image. But, but, I was, there was this new documentary that came out of Nickelodeon. It's called Quiet on Set. Mm. That. Dan yeah, that brought oh, out Dan yeah. Schneider's things. And mm. watching you guys, I could actually remember all the episodes that they were showing because I was such a Nickelodeon kid. Yeah, but but I time. never saw any of those sexual in windows at that moment. But someone and was talking about how, one, it's disturbing, of course, now that these kids are coming out that they were sexually abused. But it's also disturbing that these were the things we were watching innocently. Mm. Like, I wasn't watching yeah, I Nickelodeon for anything. for anything. Yeah. But those things are the things that are in your subconscious. So there was an episode on Ariana with a potato oh, yeah. and this. And it's like, as a kid, you're not watching that sexually. But it's informing mm. some of the things of the decisions and or how that you start going to, to think of things and people generally. Yeah, to <laughs> yeah and they shot like, this. Like that's the oh, level yeah. it was on. And all the like cam so shots on the girls' faces yeah. and yeah. this. But you, you're watching it. And it's no more than 30 years later. You mm. don't know why. You want to be calm down every time. <laughs> But it's because there's something that was imprinted on in mm. you. That's why I think also the power of media with yeah. like these sexual things is also there. Because when you talk of like the immoral things, I I actually agree in terms of I think what's immoral now is not what was immoral then. That's why we mm. see the fetishes getting worse and worse. Because mm. now everyone is gonna do certain things. That's right? no longer taboo. Only mm. talking. So, so small. now people are looking for the real <laughs> taboo <laughs> thing. <laughs> No more that's, talking. That's, okay. that's going to be the tagline. <laughs> Man, of you this kill episode. me. No more what talking. No more, no more talking. <laughs> just, <laughs> just no so more talking. Small. Now but we're going our parents are going for. <laughs> I don't know what. But you told your parent you were choked. It's like what? <laughs> what is this? What, what are you doing with your mouth? The mouth that's is for you. you. <laughs> oh, Puria. Yeah. And like, I see, like, the, I think, like, even oral sex, like, increased in even Uganda after sex. civil speech. Yeah. <laughs> because even those who were not doing it were like, if people use their mouth, people are using their mouth. Like, Ma- Mama Jane, please stop. <laughs> 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 President, and, I love and, you. And, here. And, and that's what that's what the, the Bible says as well. Like when the law came oh in, like yeah, the more people found out, sin yeah. increased. Because like, don't take your neighbor's wife. You're like, yeah, actually, could. <laughs> I, mean, I like, could. Yeah. Just walk yeah. I mean, it's there. just there, so and I could get the wife. Yeah. Human wow. nature is so interesting. And that's what if there's anyone running Hollywood secretly and spreading all these things, mm. the best way they did it was like just putting this information out there. Because now vanilla it. sex is and in then, all movies and yeah. series. Like it's like before sex scene would come on, they would go under the bed and then turn this the light. Implication. Yeah. But now there's positions, this by the time a kid sounds goes, sound, everything. Now you're like, I've seen this one. Just by the time you go I think let's do two more and then <clears throat> we can wrap up these things are getting very deep uh, Mr. disembodied voice <laughs> okay can screen. I do better than fetish <laughs> I don't think we're going I mean, to talk about it right <laughs> lunch is served the animals of the world exist for their own sake we have no right to kill them solely for our satisfaction. Tom Regan. Huh. Does no. our right to sustenance override the potential suffering of animals raised for food, especially when there are non-animal alternatives? Should lab-grown meat be embraced as a solution? Is veganism a moral 
imperative or a personal choice. <clears throat> now, I'm going to be a hypocrite with this one because I famously in, in my house stopped eating fish. Hey. Mm. <laughs> I yeah, so but uh, because of like, okay, deep down it's because I didn't like dealing with all the bones. Like the fish they like to cook was the one which is like the fresh mm -hmm. with the bones. And I was like, man, why am I being tortured mm -hmm. to pick out? Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm not eating fish anymore. So I was like, why? So I was like, like I, you see like the way like in the States they cut, the cows are killed. It's like a gun to the tweet tweet. Like they never see death coming. You get, but like fish actually see death coming because they're pulled out of their natural habitat. For st before mm. they even cooked, they they're literally pulled out of the water and lived, and then they're like they're uh, like struggling to breathe. Then after, then now they are cooked and fried and like, so yeah. When There's you put it like that, <laughs> <laughs> but that's why I say I'm a hypocrite because I'll do that for fish, but then I'll go and enjoy. You the know what's worse? Because I didn't feel anything when he said that, so now I'm questioning myself. Like, no fish are too far. What do you mean? Why are your eyes always open? Ah. But also, with I, in that regard, I ask um, a human being takes nine months to. Fully mm. develop and come out, but fish is like how many months? <laughs> You're like they'll be replaced. They'll be replaced way. quickly. So it's not this. I, I I feel. I get that, but then if you know me, you know I am for the little person. No? <laughs> Allah. So I'm going to go and speak for the where fish consider the them they will never go extinct. Why? Like let's mm. find other alternatives. <laughs> me, I'm like yeah. at the end of the day, if I'm not eating you, something else is. <laughs> we are all in a food chain. That's another quote for us. Okay? <laughs> Use that on your first date if I'm yeah. not eating you. Someone else is going to eat you. You can even blend the two. If I'm, I'm not, if I'm not choking you, someone else is going to eat Someone else is going to choke you. Someone else is going to choke you anyways. Mm. Because even me, the lion will kill me. And mm. what? It will think about how yeah. my mother gave birth to me. I mean, you know, the government doesn't think about it. It will be like, yes, yeah, so was good. It's my taxes. So I, I should yeah. I traumatize the younger people. Someone, <laughs> someone, someone is going to eat someone. someone. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I, you feel I, nothing. You feel nothing. I feel nothing. But also, it's as a human being, you take nine months, you come out, you go to school. Like, your life is too many things that you have to cater to. But fish mm -hmm. are just living their life. I mean, reproduce, that's it. And I feel water, like Mother it. Earth, like, Mother Earth, God, like, is way bigger than, like, I don't think I'm going to save the world if I'm not eating meat. Mm. Because there's a way. I think we over put our importance as humans, eh? We playing God, we, eh? Playing God. Like we think that like the universe is going to heal itself. Yeah. I really believe that. Like, like it's like same. it's going to it's going to take us out before we take it out. Mm. And that's just what it is. Like yeah. we are seeing, oh, there is less eyes, what for it is going to find a way to now change that up and do what yeah, it, it does. Survived so many other things, yeah. Right? Yeah. Ice ages. I mean, if more. we didn't eat fish and it was just there, would the water still be enough for all that fish that has yeah. been saved? <laughs> <laughs> we have made your fish. There was they are peeing, they are peeing in, our, in our lakes. <laughs> but I guess I would feel something if I see someone eating a dog. <laughs> ah, this is where the question was going to go. At a certain point, there are some animals. No. You see someone eating, you'd go. But yeah, but I would still nature, feel like it's okay. No, actually, it, the, the dog okay. thing would be like. It will be like oh, oh awesome. <laughs> no, not awesome. But I'll be like anyway. That's their thing. Like. Now judge you if you ate a dog. If you ate a cat, I'm like, it's neither here nor there. I don't there. judge you if you were. I don't know if you saw that CNN reporter who went to do a thing with those cannibalist people. Oh. And then they had to stop recording because they were now talking about eating him. The guy, <laughs> the guy was like, I think we have to stop this. Yeah, it looks tasty. <laughs> have you seen the toes? Yeah, I think eating people is where I stop. Because there are people from who that eat part. That one. Another yeah. line, have you seen the toes? <laughs> <laughs> but I understand being vegan from the space of health. Like I don't mm, think yeah. as, as people were supposed to rely on meat as much as, mm, as, much as, as we, we do. do. Yeah. yeah, which is the same thing as um, sorry, I'm lactose intolerant, and now that on the other side I'm defending it. <laughs> <laughs> but after a your, your body, body right. really doesn't need. Yeah, um, how many years did you? live on mil milk alone now <laughs> here you are and meanwhile i was one of those people of let's just have the milk for breakfast it's like oh it's hot outside let's get a glass of milk mm. i beg your pardon yeah like it's hot it's hot <laughs> you would get a glass of milk yeah. and um i got a lunch is taking forever yeah. oh we are going to bed let's take a glass of hot milk mm. um it will get you into you know let's sleep but so now too much you carry all that milk always... to bed mm. yes that's why she's like, lactose intolerant. Like no, five, five, five liters. <laughs> you are my creator, <laughs> but I'm your master, the monster. 
Frankenstein. Say that with some gravitas. <laughs> <coughs> you are my creator. So the title is playing God. You are my creator, but I'm your master, the monster, Frankenstein. And the question is, should we allow gene editing to enhance human physical and cognitive abilities? Are there ethical concerns about creating a two-tiered two two society with genetically modified individuals? Yeah. How do we ensure equitable access to these technologies? Why do we even need them? Bambi, the I ground is yeah. not leveled already. Yeah. It's, it's not, but also why... How much because editing? you can you can say I want a son who is the best in basketball, who's an athlete, who's this. If the people have money in. doing it, so they've started it on uh, you so know like people who have more, your kid is going to be successful for sure. He is, but we are all going to die. You especially white people are going to end up in a mass grave. But still, <laughs> the life you've lived is still going to be there. <laughs> By a law, if you're white, you're <laughs> in a mass grave. What have you had? <laughs> you're so, finished. It's Gene not editing. like... I, I, I'm, so I'm not it. for... I'm against it because it's just... So, like, if you found out your, your child had, like, hunting John's disease, like, you find out mm. early enough and they go, mm. hey, we can uh, do a little something to remove it because that's where it started to remove those genetic... Um, the things it's, that will become activated for someone with mm. a disease. But then after that point, they'll go, well, you can make them taller. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe you can make them have you fairer hair. Have a, yeah. Or you can make them this. Like at, at some point, mm. where do you determine the I line? mean, if it's something that is going to save someone's life, I think that's where the line should be. If mm. it's just to enhance, like we want you taller or bigger or fair hair or something like that, that's just for aesthetics and just. It, I don't think it's necessary, but also a life where everyone is perfect. Yeah. What then? Not heaven. Mm -mm. <laughs> but also, that's so sad for it's so sad. everyone else. But yeah. I think that's that's just an example of, of, of what comes out of like humans having access mm. to a certain kind of knowledge and, and that. Like that's why the gods were there. They put a limit yeah. to what humans can do mm -hmm. because it started off as a good thing, right? Helping. Yeah. Like if the, I mean, already you're in love, but you're going to make a sickler baby. You're going to find a way of dealing with that. Mm -hmm. But then, what happens after that? We have all the resources and knowledge. Mm -hmm. Let's give Beyonce twins. Yeah, <laughs> Let's I mean, I'm glad give that we live in And I think what's going, to, what's going to happen is create way more emotional and mental problems. Like yeah. they sure. may not be physical. Like here, yeah, you may have less sick mm. kids or whatever. But what is this but, modification yeah. doing to this child, anyways? Mm. So. I'm just glad, like I'm saying, I'm glad we live here. So that technology will, will be the last guys to get, will be the last batch to get it. Hey, so. you, you're in the class that's ah. not getting it. There's a Ugandan yeah. here who has already thinking it. Do they kid. live here? You can because always go if abroad. You're now in the modified also, you can't use our roads. <laughs> you Your body can just give way. No, you, you become bump resistant. Because you've like seen my, now, like, mind. I think, it, oh, I've seen it also help, like, um, LGBTQ, for mm -hmm. example. You'll see, like, there's a gay cup I follow they have their it's a black man and a white man they have one black daughter mm. one white daughter from their genes mm. oh. yeah and it's like they are, you can see they're good parents yeah. and i i'm like oh happy for the kids or whatever but i'm also like i wonder how that will affect that kid when it grows up like having yeah. a white sister white twin sister who looks like you mm. but you are facing the racial yeah. things you and know also, why so it's like all the best why like which per like this black parent is the one who chose me, and this white. No, I think they. I don't know. They did it. Anymore. I'm seeing what, what you're saying. saying. Yeah. At some point, like, hmm. Did they no, choose? No. And yeah. they're like, this is the one who should be black. This yeah. should be white. Leaving it to fate, fate is like, okay, okay. what but happened? They're twins. Happens. They're twins though, but two different races. How do you even reconcile that? Yeah. Because so good remember. luck to you who will be there. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't. <laughs> If you find this, we love you and <laughs> we love you. Will find it back. because it will be on YouTube. Christ is about to come back, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> in uh, those sentences on what the theory Excuse is. Excuse me, please. <laughs> Two more things. <clears throat> Who's going? You. Eh? You go first. Yes, okay. you then. Me? Mm. <clears throat> the man in the mirror. I'm looking for. Okay. Not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it is faced. James Baldwin. Okay. Uh, does the concept of toxic masculinity unfairly demonize men 
or does it highlight harmful societal expectations associated with traditional masculinity? Mm. Um, put it like this. So, I learned many things from Ugandans on Twitter, particularly feminists on Twitter. Mm. So, it was the first time I saw people. Was the time. Mm. Man, I'm telling you, it was. <laughs> I know that time. I really like that fire. <laughs> Um, so I had two experiences. One was I didn't know someone um, was trans. Um, we're talking about it like it's a topic, like it's something over there. Over there, and they spoke to me and said, "No, you know, I, I don't identify as uh, female or male." I was like, mm. <laughs> "Now, at that point, I think the terror that uh, I say terror, but." There was this feeling that men had, like, oh, we, we're not supposed to ask questions, just mm. agree. Mm -hmm. But then I found that any time I would engage with mm. sensitivity, I'd go like, I'm not sure about this, can you explain? And they were quite open to explain to me the feeling, uh, the literature. And I feel like I was quite lucky in that I never then fell into that deep hole where guys are like, ah, man, uh, men are trash. Mm. Now, when I would see men are trash, I'd go, but what about me? Everyone always comes up with the exception, mm. not seeing the history behind the phrase, mm -hmm. not understanding that there's a reason it is used because it's going to get that attention, mm. right? So we're looking at the aesthetics. Then I also understanding, like, imagine a white person telling a black person how they should fight for, you know, oh, their racial yeah. equality. Like, at a certain point, I was like, why, why am I discussing this? Like, I don't fully understand what it means to be a woman. I think I do, mm -hmm. but uh, I need to educate myself more and more. And then the last thing was, I eventually <coughs> started realizing that I was connecting masculinity with patriarchy. Mm. And you know, there's a qualifier. If someone says this is a toxic egg, it doesn't mean all eggs are toxic. It means mm -hmm. that there is something about this thing toxic. that is not, it is hurting people. And the toxicity also learned is harming the very men that are trying to mm. participate. Like the conversation we are having earlier, um, I think being a man is you always have to have your guard up. Yeah. Like uh, every woman I know is Bad afraid guy. of men in their life. Like mm. it's like living with bears. We're just moving yeah. around and suddenly we can do something. <laughs> but then we also have that fear because we also do shit. Like we say no diddy or no homo. Which is a weird thing. I, I really don't like saying it, but yeah. we say it because we have this feeling that someone, another man, is going to treat me how men treat, treat women. women yes. And the biggest fear a man has is being treated like they treat women. Mm. So it's like if that is the point, the, that then answers everything. Everything. Um, yeah, and I think it's it's tough though because if you're young now, I think a lot of guys fall into that Andrew Tate mm. wormhole mm. because they'll perceive that, okay, I have all these issues, I'm not getting a job, I'm not able to do the things a man is supposed to do. I can't like keep the household on just one income. Mm. And then I look for someone to blame. And there are guys that are, you know, it's the women. I'm like, in fact, why are they picking her? Forgetting that these are rules that <laughs> men set Men's up way. for mm -hmm. ourselves. So I feel like it's hard to give an example of a non-patriarchal man because mm. all of history you look back even the bold examples like you see that guy did this that guy did mm -hmm. that and maybe there's some version of it that can be healthy despite what's going on but there's an uphill task for i think all of us men because up until now um i remember this border guy one, one time telling me it's like uh you know because i'm not a woman like all these problems mm. he said all these things like i'm not a woman <laughs> and he was like wow <laughs> he was like well, what he was like yeah, yeah. at least mm, they, like there's there's someone that you can dominate to feel mm. powerful like even if you've been put upon shouted at at work yeah you go home I and you take out that woman. aggression oh, no, and woman. yeah i think the silence of women in like society african society has preserved the esteem of all these mm. men like it's usually at Later times when I talk to my older female relatives that they tell me the truth mm -hmm. about these guys mm -hmm. that I knew of the things they did. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, man, what the hell? So yeah. I, I don't think it's unfair. I think it just feels unfair because anytime you're corrected or anytime you feel like you have to change, mm -hmm. it Their might seem, is, uh, yeah, it feels defensive. painful, but I'm like, beyond the pain, there is something useful and you can yeah. come out on the other side. I End recently, of my day, I, uh, <laughs> I recently saw, I don't know if it was on Twitter or somewhere, someone was like, I, actually, I think it was on your Instagram stories where they're like, 
as a girl oh, you work with you, yeah you like oh, i'm yeah, daddy's girl i'm me. daddy's girl then at a, a certain age your mother starts to tell you like woman you, to woman she's like my girl and Please. you start to experience actually life as a woman as a woman and you start and seeing your like, mother as a human you're mm. like mm. you're just like yeah how like, yeah how did i not see this and again considering the fact that most of them were married by like 25 you're 28 mm. and you're just struggling with life you have no kids no dependents it's just from vibes it's just like so she did that went back home was a mm. wife probably was experiencing domestic violence like it's too many expectations for one person mm. but because and then someone asks yeah. men are always asking these days women don't stick it out in marriage i'm like <laughs> the reason we yeah. don't is because now you can actually live and still be alive mm. and you don't need a man to build a heart for you yeah, yeah. I'm but also to... even if it's not as extreme as domestic violence like i grew up seeing my dad like on a pedestal like i was the full daddy's girl the like last born mm. and my dad is an upright <laughs> <people. laughs> he's this an one's... upright man i see he has done things that he he needs to do and all this but even me that realization came to me of seeing how my mother's dreams had to take you know mm. not necessarily a back seat but just the experience of a woman when you when you become <laughs> a woman you're like after they've yeah. stopped sheltering mm. you or whatever yeah like even the responsibility you carry you just carry, yeah. from the time you're 13 if you get pregnant you're like eh. yeah <laughs> yeah so I think, this is something sorry. that can happen to me like mm. it's it's not something that it's not an abstract not so thing somewhere yeah. Yeah. yeah so i don't think i i'm not a daddy's girl i am my mother's girl but i think the very first time we had an, a conversation that just i don't know if i needed to know that information then but it changed who i was how i thought about people what it was just like yeah you're still alive you wake up and, and you still love me yeah and all these other kids that you have and you yeah. still respect your relatives and you go on about life mm -hmm. because i'm just like if i took half of what you took I me mean, that's why i say these days i used to be I'm those ones of, i i'm still a feminist because i still believe in equality and whatever but i'm like yeah i agree we need to be paid just for existing as a woman <laughs> unpaid there is just so right. much unpaid labor you're mm. doing 24 7 like as a daughter as a female friend mm. as a woman like mm. just you enter place and you're scanning for if you're safe like a man just enters and that's it <laughs> and they've that's arrived it. that's it like i've gone out for you like okay how will i get home no, no, no. Who do I need to go with? Who do I, need to, who do I share like, my, oh, my, trip, my with? trip with? This is like, like ah, I told time someone has long. to know where I am, what I'm doing, so that if something happens, they I know where I remember when last year I was a nice solar travel thing. Then when it reached, I had so much anxiety because mm. I was like, wait a minute. Like, I'm in another country. I was not, I didn't go to no bars, nothing, because you remember. Oh, I wow, can yeah. literally, mm. and I was talking to a male friend of mine who's like, I do a solo trip for you. And I told him, I was like, I tried it. And for me, it brought me more stress than the, than the relaxing. Because now you're in a country where you don't have a relative. Yeah. You can't, like, just... And then if, you are, if you're a black woman, it even it's just adds... story. Anyway. Funny, we are talking about this because the next card is on the F word. <coughs> um, Feminism. The, yeah for the for the master's tools will never dismantle the master's house yeah. they may allow us to temporarily beat to beat him at his own game but they will never enable us to bring about genuine change <laughs> and this fact is only threatening to those women who will still define the master's house as their only source of support so the question is in what ways do you think modern feminism or feminist thinkers still maintain traditional or patriarchal views and norms and what should we be doing about it this one yes um <laughs> she's been i'm um, like i'm a feminist by the way even as i say this but i think yeah for sure there are ways we because if you look at patriarchy it's also connected to capitalism mm. so i find like at a certain point feminists began just fighting over power dynamics yeah, that means you just now want to be the one on top. Mm. You want to be the one holding causing. the power. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's like when we sit back and look at, I'll look at it in terms of when we say feminine and masculine energy. Um, masculine is usually the power structures and the leadership and this, right? 
and then feminism we all have the energies and da 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 da. But feminist energy is more of like nurturing and care and and whatever and this. And I don't think some of the modern feminist views are looking to create a different society. It's like you guys have done this power structure yeah. and now I Let's want to over. come on top, mm. right? As opposed to okay, this is what you guys have created. How can we create something different? Mm. Which is why I love Bill Hooks. Mm. Like she's not just fighting to be on top. She's giving alternate solutions that guys look here. Love is the answer and what does love mean? What does communion mean and this? Because those are Mm. I think uh, if you look at like matriarchal societies, they're built on different values. Yeah. But sometimes as modern feminists, we get into this thing of you want to use the same, the same way the court said, you're trying to use the master's <laughs> tools to now build a different house for you. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what you guys think. I'm now good. I'm Linda has come with the essay. <laughs> mm. I for sure think the same. It's not like they're aiming to, I don't think we are aiming <clears throat> I am for women. A hundred percent. Like, girl child is a priority. Like we said, you have to think of the small things every other day where it's like. This year is boy child. Everyone is if boy I leave, child. If I. Uh, is yeah. it because they are. Anyway. <clears throat> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> Alan, really? Wow. It's getting dark, you know, it comes alive in the dark time. <laughs> Dark times. Mm. No, but I'm um, for the girl child, but it's like, like me, Belina mentioned, it's like, do we, are we aiming for a world where it's like, to create some form of balance or is it now come, now let's just switch positions. So you, you're here and you, you're here, which makes me wonder, do, there's an observation, like very, me, I'm a go-getter, I'm a feminist, I'm this, mm. I'm bad. Like, do they like submissive men or? I'm just, guys, mm. I'm just asking. Do they like? Because I, I don't know a mm. world where both of you are like just, mm. and it works. <laughs> yeah. Like, because I feel it, like if women sat down and we decided the type of, I feel like it would look more, I don't want to say socialist, but it would look more, the same way, just if you look at a family structure, yeah, mm. the mother will always be like, even if we have this Kalito, has everyone gotten food? You know, well, the man is like, Where's my piece of chicken? Like, at the <laughs> end of the day, so if you take that and take it on like a society level, I think yeah. it's the same thing of like, So now, what happens to the kids? To the everyone yeah. is fighting for their piece of chicken mm -hmm. now. This and now you have the submissive, which is remember what we talked about. We talked about this on this our podcast mm. how, like, I feel like because of that, there was that wave of feminism that came that was. Hyper anything hyper thing it mm. is like is, mm, yeah. you've gone too much on too that. Much on you're not extreme, finding your yeah. balance. I find that's why now you're hearing the language has changed to being your feminine because now we people have woken up and the men have taken on the the. I tell some of the most dangerous men. Mm, uh, the men allies. <laughs> the men are now, language. Allies yeah. are also now like yeah, let the women work. You're finding women are the ones working the most in the <laughs> home and this and now women are like wait where's the balance is this what we fought for because yeah. now the balance has now the power has just shifted now you're the one going out to earn money mm. and this guy who is also not, to the workplace. who's not even good at actually nurturing the home <laughs> is now the one home because now you're coming back to burnt food yeah so it's like how do we find the balance me i like bill hooks because of yeah that. i think mm -hmm. i want um, to hear from a man actually from, I'm just like, why are we fighting to get rid of the softness? Like, what's for the world? The softness. I'm just like, I'm not trying to be and a man. Because it's all related to capitalism, guys. That's yeah. what we need to address. Yeah. Let's stop working. Yeah. Apple is going work just in a different way. We'll work in a different way. We want to deprive people, not some yeah. guys at the top getting everything. Uh, I'll, wait, I'll go after my, <laughs> my leader. <laughs> then I shall I, close the I, I, I think, my, I think the, the problem is the what you're saying, the top. Mm. Top represents power, and power can be like if someone doesn't know how to control that power, they misuse it. And so, even if like men had the power for a long time and they maybe started off innocently as like because like dads gave away their daughters because they knew they wouldn't take care of them forever, they needed a man to give them security, affairs, and what, and then they build their own home. And then, when that man felt powerful, all that responsibility became to 
you won't leave the house you stay here you will do this I'll give you as many kids as i want i'm giving you the security and and all this you get yeah. and that's the, that, that's the issue yeah and like if you go to the, the arab world it's like because there's a lot of rape and stuff they're like they never allowed women to walk mm. by themselves and then it said offers something good and innocent of i'm protecting you please make sure if you're walking with your husband so that no other man touches you mm. to the point of where you know that one's you know that woman we're going to rape her she's walking alone so men said beating women like i watched an animation with my daughter and it was really sad because like this guy saw like the friend's wife walking alone and said beating her of like you should not walk like you're making me do this i'm not beating you so that you learn a lesson and yet this woman the man went to work never came back and now the daughter had to pretend to be a boy so she can actually go out and do work and get a job and feed the family looking at me like you have no idea <laughs> no man no i know i'm not talking what? about it <laughs> but yes but like in the in the arab world like that's like women are not allowed to walk like without mm. their husband they would beat you and they would blame you for like well, you're making us do this to you like we know you we know your husband why are you putting us in this position to beat you because you're not walking with your husband and that's that's the issue like the power and then i've seen also the power switch like i've seen communities where it's the woman on top like in in my household like people always wonder like my friends are like but Alan why don't you just put your foot down I'm like no like I didn't bring people in my house to put my foot down <laughs> <laughs> like my house has my wife it has my mom like these guys run they do what they want to do yeah. but usually I, I allow them to do it when they now. fail you know they, like now we have failed with this but I see what that does like when given too much power I reach the point of like like it's it's exhausting it's too much so mm-hmm. someone who does not know how to use that and control that it's Mm-hmm. And if you look at boys today like okay men 30s grew up in women's emancipation like so much focus was put on the girls girls were given extra points in mm-hmm. in uneb and stuff and all those things I know yes it it made sense but look at the boys today they're putting on sneakers still playing games <laughs> at 35 <laughs> they would rather choose to stay home than work like we were not allowed we we still remained boys we're still the young and then yeah. now women now are ones who are going and pushing but then guess what now they don't like that men everything is so easy for them mm. what do you mean you can just stay and play your playstation the yeah. whole day why aren't you coming out here but like you wanted us to <laughs> come down and you get so so power is is the problem yeah. so whoever gets that and whoever how they choose to use it we can have a better society but oh, it's so heavy. Heavy. that power it's mm. so heavy yeah uh Man, they give us free points actually you know you said that and I stopped on it I was like yeah you had a point for being a girl <laughs> I did not go to uh-huh. university because she was from Moroto uh-huh. so uh, because of the district she was from they added on mm-hmm. those points also yeah. from and there then, then she got girl. in yeah. she was like hey, hey I mean <laughs> and then I came home to complain like no, 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 even me I did stuff so my dad sat me down and said do you know that when i was a kid that m- your wife was your property legally like she could not even open up a g- bank account yeah, until you were there system. and at the time i think in the us there were it was when they were get, getting the suffrage movement and the people who resisted it the most were women and it reminds me of that quote of why do people fight for their uh, servitude as if it's their life but it's a different I, i i always have compassion even for someone who's speaking from their experience because in your experience if you know this is what makes me a woman it's your identity now someone is touching it and shifting it mm. i remember my mom at some point couldn't go to visit my brother in chiboli because she was wearing pants and they mm. said go i was like who oh, up what? to now like I, i i it couldn't be reconciled but i like the way my the way explained to me is that the for so long things are a certain way then when they change you who's experiencing that change in that moment you're like this is unfair but like yeah pendulums swing mm. like this until you find some stability mm. uh the people who are suffering before you they could also say but now why am i suffering mm. in this time uh, i think for us as guys it's supposed to say let, let's work together to figure this thing out because i think that the male female dynamic also adds that sexual tension like we like oh, that's how girls are how guys are <laughs> and then it gives that excitement I really don't want to be fully understood. You know what I mean? There's that yeah. mystery of who's that person like they are knowing me and yet I still love them. Uh I I I I to the thing that you were saying, I suppose you know that girl boss feminism that came up. Mm. I think that's what most people thought was feminism. Yeah. So like even uh working at Stand before instance, when Anne was appointed uh, mm. CEO, they were like victory for women. I was like 
Yeah. Victory for her. Mm. <laughs> but it's a symbolic thing. Like mm. that suddenly are now all women going to be sort of mm. different things. Maybe at most they'll say a woman can do this. Mm-hmm. Hooray. But the material choices that you have, like like you're saying, I think it's the right for you to choose and say, you know what, I want to stay home. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, you have that option. Yeah. Well, I want to work. That's my option. Mm-hmm. Well, I want to do this. That's the option. Um, yeah, I want a world. And I think all men know this because if men talk about their daughters or their girlfriends, their wives, mm-hmm. you see the fear they have in their eyes. Like, you're going out alone? Mm. Why you like, so the question is, who are you knows. fearing? Mm-hmm. You as the man talking about you, yeah. who are you fearing? Is yeah, that the women? Fearing. Or? Yeah. But also, yeah, we have to give it up for what the feminists did for us because yeah. me, I couldn't for exist sure. in that other society <laughs> Sis. with my big mouth and I, what I that's want That's what to was do. going to get mm-hmm. me mad at first time. <laughs> that big mouth. A silent mother of four. <laughs> <clears throat> Ladies, gentlemen, thank you so much for coming. This was thank a little you. taste of the, oh, what the theory? Uh, can we talk cards? Uh, when are they coming out? We're supposed to tell them. They're coming out on 8th April. Is it on that the same day? They are watching this. Probably. They are out now. They are out now. <laughs> Contact the number that you no. see in the message. Go to our website. You can get it direct. Oh, can yeah. we talk 256.com? They will also be at Bold in Africa. Kadamoman Kada Coffee. Kadamoman Coffee. Book point, book point in Village book, Mall. Yeah. And, and Gift Fair in Kansanga. Fair in Kansanga. And Mahiri Books. And Mahiri as well. Books, for sure. Mahura. Um, you guys, support a Ugandan business. Look at this. Yeah. Be pro-feminist. Don't think about me. Think about them. Guys, when you buy, we're able to have a... Like, we're able to go home not scared. Because yeah. we're able to afford an Uber. Yeah. So, do it for not us. afford though. No. Alan, closing thoughts. He has no thoughts. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much for coming. Thank you and for, for sitting in the us. with us. This was so fun. This was so fun. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Cheers. That was a good one. Bye. Bye.